together. That's who I was playing prior to yep. Uni 2. So I and just love getting to see all of the different spider web setups. But I also like getting to see Nana say get in. She's got so many tools to blow up those spider webs and sort of nullify one of Byakuya's biggest tools. Yeah, she can definitely, you know, stop a lot of the mid-screen web pressure, which is why you already see Big Black going to be ending in these 2-2-X series instead of trying to deal with the mid-screen uh, grid gain, right? They're nice 3C, but not able to find a confirm, but they will after that assault JC. Yeah, that was a really, really nice setup. And then using that 2B to, or the slide 6-6B as well, getting all the spider webs set up underneath as well. And then the grab back into the corner from Big Black using again 2-2-C what a tool that is one of my favorite additions to this and already in Celestial too working on a ton of meter Big Black is in complete control yeah they were able to really just like take a lot of bolt strikes and grid gain uh, out of the early stages you know you saw them trying to shield and try to gain it back but by the time they had lost that uh, Big Black was in Celestial and was able to take the round at the same time didn't even need to cash out with 200 meter and should be spending some of it here uh, ending into the spider jail and, okay, there was a recovery. Ooh, and using that creeping shift as well to get out of the corner did bolt struck and taking care of that corner position. But what a great way to get in there. Big Black working their way in, setting up the spider webs once again. Hard knockdown and the 660 putting or 66B putting in work. Yeah, definitely going to be one of those better neutral tools. And I like that use of creeping edge to be able to try to get out of the web sets that you've been seeing people go for. And I like that Bull Strike just immediately recognizes, hey, I'm not opening them up right here. I need to just escape out until I can find the 2-2-C of my own and just keep the Ooh. pressure going. That was a really risky veil off. It didn't end up hitting Bolt Struck the way that Big Black thought he would. He still has some health to work with, but uh, yeah, that was... I was going to say, Bolstruck spent a lot of meter there, and it didn't end up working out for them. Big Black, once again, going for the setup. Chain shift did not work out for them, and Big Black, despite all of the hard work from Bolstruck, is going to take that first game. Yeah, you saw a couple of uh, like unfortunate things happen right back to back there for Bolt Strike. Uh, the first thing was the J two three six C, the big wind tornado. Uh, mm -hmm. Just did it like slightly too late, like maybe two or three frames, and it didn't uh, connect in time. So instead of getting a hard knockdown, they just got pressed out of it. And then when they tried to uh, see Sordicar their way out of that situation, Big Black was already ready to press. And like, I'm not letting you do any of those kinds of shenanigans. I'm holding it down. Definitely. And it was held down. It's held down really well. As a reminder to chat, uh, this is going to be two out of three, except for winners, losers, and grands, which will be three out of five. And Big Black with a great opening here once again. The thing with Big Black is they are so good about getting into the corner immediately to set up their pressure to maintain the control and just utilize all of these great tools that Byakuya has. And Nanase just doesn't have a lot of the horizontal movement to try and get out as swiftly. I love the idea of using chain shift, using that new system mechanic to get out, but you're against Big Black and you've got to do a lot better than that to kill the spider. Yeah, and you know, especially like situations like this, where it's just so hard and you have to wait for them to go for those strike throw mixes so you can actually get out of the web setups a lot safer. Nice goal throw tech out and found the 2C, but not able to get the hit confirmed. No, the new disc came out and we did get a break, grid break situation there. Uh, Bolt Strike looked like they were going for a little bit of a grab there, just trying to create different kinds of pressure and momentum, but Big Black's blocking, say that three times fast, I dare you, um, is really spectacular. Just jumps out of the corner easily, trying to take their turn back, and then using that chain shift to change the momentum to see what was going to happen. Bolt Struck now out. Yeah, and they're really trying to... Yeah, it was a super good 2B right there. You saw Bullstrike really trying to go for a lot of these big swingy options to try to gain control of not only the screen spacing, but just pressure as a whole. And Big Black, more than confident to just hold down back, get into situations mm -hmm. like this where they can afford these 2-2-Xs two, two and not have to worry about big things like that. Nice throw opener there from Bullstruck trying to ch change the momentum. Excuse me, I apologize for not speaking well there. But then the throw reverses there. Oh, what a great catch there from Big Black using that 3C to just knock Boltstruck back into the corner. And now it's Boltstruck's turn to butt down back. Yeah, we just slightly out of range to get the confirm. So, you know, Boltstruck almost found an opportunity to take it right there. Nice 2-2-C right there. Going to be able to stay safe. <gasps> Falling confirm right there from Big Black. Going to just lead them right back into the corner as long as they keep it tight. It's a good setup here. Yep, taking back that turn, and then one, two, th uh, just okay. We just got three. Sometimes you can get four of those spider webs set up, but you have to be careful. Do you stand? Do you not? The overhead comes in. Unfortunate for Bolt Struck. 
yet. Should be. Oh, yeah. It had to go for a reset right there because they recognized, hey, this base combo is going to kill even with going for, like, CBO or just ending in um, 5AB into IW. Like, there was just not enough damage on the table. So they had to find that reset opportunity. And it was really good of them to go for the low right there because you saw Bolt Truck always... Um, when they were going for high-low mix, was 10 been going high again and again and again? Because that's what a lot of Biakias like to do. Right. She's got range where you don't think she should have range. That sword is just massive and deceptive. And then you've got Wagner, which I will always remember fighting uh, the previous commentator from our last set in Grand Blue Fantasy versus Maverick when we were uh, playing some offline together. And uh, Maverick plays Wagner and just turned to me and went, Jadlin, stop pushing buttons, I'm plus. Yeah, that is the thing that this character wants to be doing, you know. And, uh, Lene also can do that in a lot of these situations, but right now Mario just trying to stay in the air to not allow anything like that to happen. But Revert, after getting hit a couple times, found their opportunity to get out. Now holding Mario down to the corner. Good throw tech out. Takes Nicely the done there. Yeah, okay. Using the chain shift there. That was really nice to be able to tech on that throw. Ooh, again, creating pressure counter. Oh, Lene just looks sad when she gets hit like that. You're like bullying a first grader. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, this is definitely bullying the small child experience. Uh, you know, Wagner has a lot of really good tools that actually cover the same range as Lene wants to be, but are usually like a frame or two faster. So you can really get some big advantages where other characters can't, and just like that, finding a big opening with this overhead. Yeah, that was huge. And now you have double powered up shield, powered up sword. Okay, we do get the DP coming out from Revert. Apparently I said it like I am not from the United States, but uh, thank you for that correct. So Revert comes in using all of that from Lene. Does manage to get, catches Mario just trying to tap out a little button there. And this is going to be a decent sized combo using the EXS there as well. Yeah, also like off those two little interactions that Revert gained, taking away the 100 meter from the double buff gain, it was very, very important to try to make this comeback. But a little stagger right there, finding the quick counter hit should give Mario enough to close it out with the IW. Yes. Nicely done there for Mario. Very quick too. Yeah, I mean that's sort of a uh, that's sort of Mario's specialty, you know. Especially when you saw when he was playing Street Fighter VI uh, on the jury a while back. Um, he's very, very uh, consistent with just I'm going to hit you and I'm going to get as much damage as I possibly can in this given situation. Uh, and versus a character like Lene, who doesn't have the health to play around like some of these no. other characters, uh, you tend to get a lot of reward out of that with Wagner. You definitely do, and I feel like it, that previous game was a clinic on how that matchup will typically go. Ooh, catches Revert putting out some of those air projectiles, which went straight over Mario's head and allowed this initial combo to come up, as well as the charge for the sword. And a big hit coming out here, too. If they keep this up, they're going to end up in Celestial because they're working into that seventh block of grid. Yeah, and you already saw, go oh, tried to go for the double burn route right there, new to uh, UD2, but instead, not able to fully connect it, had to cash out early to keep their turn. Right into the corner. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, nice combo here. Lots of, lots of stuff going on there, and then just another down. You know, they just, they're able to charge, Mario's able to charge the sword and the shield pretty much any time they want, just allowing Wagner to take advantage every single chance they get. 200 EXS chooses to spend 100 here, and then bring Revert all the way into the corner and get the sword charge as well. Yeah, trying to find this uh, sword charge at the end of anything is is very, very important because it does allow for combo extensions off of throw, which you'll see right here. Double buff, so gets the burn. It's going to be a free couple extra hundred points of damage during this block string, which would make a throw attempt very scary if Revert was not already ready to be pressing that 2C to get out of there. Mm -hmm. I will still say that Lene's throw is the scariest thing in the game. She just, she just stabs you in the throw. Okay, we got a little bit of a low. There was a shield on that, though, and so... Mario's still winning, yeah, still winning the cycle there, which is really important. They're just gonna be able to get all this little bit extra damage and then using the chain shift once again, but Veil Off comes out for Revert. Yeah, Revert uh, went through the reaction check right there on the fuzzy block and found an opportunity with this big grid break. Ooh. Should just cash out into IW. Shouldn't kill though. No, not we'll quite, but Mario does have Celestial here and just presses the button, but it doesn't work and goes for a low for Revert. That was that was high risk and no reward. Yeah, you know, there's uh, if they had just gone for CDP, it would have been able to connect right there because of Wagner's infinite worth hitbox hitting up a little bit more up in the air, just like that DP was trying to hit in the air. But this time, Mario 
found the big opportunity. You're gonna get another burn route set. Will they get the pick? Yep, they do find the pickup this time. Uh, that was a nice pickup. There was a recovery from Revert though, just blocking low currently. Uh, nothing really opening up for Mario yet. Ooh. The Kuga did come out, did not hit though, and while Revert was in those recovery frames, Mario took their advantage and took it all the way to the game win. Yeah, you know, Mario was just playing it very, very tight there. I do really want to comment on Revert's. So that, uh, we can all learn together. Yeah, most definitely. This it can be very important in this matchup with both these characters having some pretty pivotal shield points that you need to be hitting consistently to make sure that nothing bad can happen to you. Because we've got Hyde versus Tannison. Hide uh, on Hyde. Hyde. <laughs> yeah. Uh, funnily enough, not named after the Undernight character. You know what? That's fine. But at least he's playing it, and I'm not disappointed. Yep. All right, and so Tannison, oh, didn't get the punish on the DP right there. Was not ready to get the big confirm no. that they were looking for, but they will just 360 them right back. Oh, the I was just going in, and Tannison just said, no, stay here. You're in timeout. Just grabbed him. Yeah, that's a huge part of this uh, this matchup with Walt. You can see that he does have to play a little bit slower, which allows Hyde to come in and be pretty aggressive. But if you can find those one opportunities or these like moments where Hyde wants to be slow just like that, you can find big openings. 360 whiff, but no punish. No, no punishing. All the shield comes out there. Okay, bit of a little start there for Hyde. Shielding again. I feel like if Tannison had gone for something, that could have been a grid break situation, but it didn't end up working out. High, low, go for the high again. Nope, that time went in for the grab, just trying to, again, mixing up that tempo, really important, but has been slowly pushing Tannison into the corner here. Gets the wall bounce and the knockdown as well, and then another sneaky grab. Yeah, oh, but not able to finish up these throw combos, but doesn't matter, we're gonna get a nice old fashioned American reset right here. Should be able to uh, finish the round should they wanna cash out on the 200 meter with this IW. Mm -hmm. Nice IW, great way to use all of the meter tools that you had on hand. Yep, and was able to use the chain shift at the very end during that, mm -hmm. so they were able to recover a free 50 meter off of it, only cost me 150, it's better than costing 200 right there. Yeah, and it and was now you... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh no, no that thought. <laughs> Don't worry about it right there. Nice jump out of the 360C right there. Not gonna get blown up by it today. Good luck from Tannison though. Yeah, Tannison, look at all of the grid that he's got. And there's only a couple seconds left. Okay, Hyde did manage to break it up so that it probably isn't gonna, no, he's not gonna get Celestial, but he was darn close. It's gonna win the cycle though, Tannison. Goes ahead, immediately change shifts so that he was able to EX, use the EXS and then gain all of it back. So we can use another one right here uh, to the wall, to the other wall, to the third wall. And then, oh, that's gonna be a huge punish for Tannison. Yeah, I like the use of that because you'll see a lot of walls go for like 6C there uh, or these other high options. So trying to low profile under can usually blow them up. But Tannison was already ready for it and able to end this EX swipes to take the first game. Yeah, that was 4.8k damage. I know Wald is capable of putting out a literal truck ton of damage, but when you see it and you understand how much that is in terms of a health bar of a character in uni, oh buddy, it's just stressful. <laughs> Yeah, and there's some of these situations where you're seeing Wald do sometimes like 7, 8k damage, and it can be very, very scary. You know, this is a, a grappler, right? This is through and through right. the, the embodiment of I am the big body, I am slow, but I am going to kill you if you give me the chance. So that's what Hyde has to do here. They have to play, they have to find the ways to not allow Tannison to just be able to gain control of the match as a whole. Yeah, is a good start. Mm hmm Ooh, a grid break, though. So Hyde going to be able to have the advantage for quite a bit of time here. Hard knockdown comes out as well with that overhead to throw. And then off of the wall bounce, a tiny combo, but there was recovery there. Green Shield came out from Tannison, which is pushing Hyde away, and he's having to work pretty hard. Creeping Edge comes out and was able to get out of the corner, but Hyde's still working on a perfect, still not giving Tannison a second to break out of it, and he's going to be able to use all of that meter as well. That was a perfect on the side of Hyde. Hyde not keto. Yeah, Hyde not keto doing very, very well right there. You see them now sort of get into uh, Tannison's player habits, which I think you saw them trying to figure it out in that first game and, you know, uh, wasn't able to get the big reward off it. Tannison now, though, turning that aggression up even further, realizing, oh, okay, you're going to try to delay, you're going to try to open me up. I'm just going to press, and I'm going to gain the advantage where I can. And gain the advantage where he can, he is. That was an incredible combo. Ooh, and chain shift to keep that safe, because Hyde immediately noticed that he'd whiffed on that DP, and so he has to take everything back. Ooh, whiffed again, but that time was able to block in the air, so doing a little bit better there. Ooh! 
you have to be really careful because those claws go a little bit further than one thinks they do. Grid yeah. break comes out as well. This is... Ow! I was gonna say not looking good, but I mean, it's looking 100% dead. Yeah, it always hurts. Swipes at the round start, just trying to challenge it. Hey, I know you've been wanting to aggress and try to stay in the air and you know, get over a lot of what I've been doing, but I'm not going to allow that. DP once again, but this time, I love this from Hyde, knowing like, hey, I've DP'd so much in the beginning, they're expecting it. I'm going to just start ADPing them, being able to EX cancel off of it or use chain ship to then take my turn back while they're, you know, uh, on my own wake up. Good CS right there. Should get the Ooh. throw combo to punish the creeping edge. No, but a great counter coming out from Tannison and immediately spending that EXS to get more damage onto the table because I'm playing well, so I might as well get it. And then you got the chain shift there as well. Gains more meter, smooshes hide like a bug. The veil off though, that could be huge. Got a low and then these throws, like you had mentioned, Tabby, doing a lot of them, but Tennyson doesn't seem to expect it as much as they've been happening. Yeah, you definitely have the life total to try to take those throws. So in situations like that, where you saw them uh, crouch shield uh, on the assault in right there, can always be a little scary. Yeah, you can't do the swipes like that. The 2-2-C was already out for, for Hyde right there. So it was just a, you know, the forever hurt box just being like, you can swing into this, but you're going to die for it. And you saw Tannison, I think, uh, react to the EX flash thinking it was something else, then getting punished for it. Right, getting back into this, our first 1-1 one -one of our uni bracket tonight. This has been already a lot of fun and we have a lot of uni to go i am thrilled yeah this is um yeah, yeah we, we do have a lot of uni this is only our top eight qualifiers we haven't even gotten right. to the top eight yet um but it's so much fun i love that we get to see so much of the bracket because then you just get to see how everybody gets there you get to maybe see some new names maybe some familiar names a lot of people i see some excitement for hyde being here tonight which is always a lot of fun when you have somebody that you're really thrilled to see well, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people know of Hyde uh, from their success through Type Lumina, but they've had right. someone who's been playing Undernight and other French games for a very, very long time. So this is definitely in their wheelhouse. Nice use of the 6 c right there. Going to be able to find a, uh, a big connection to keep Hyde into the corner one more time for one more 360 strike throw mix. Now put Tannis in match point. Tennyson's doing really well with this character. I had mentioned it before when we were watching um, another walled player, uh, Breaker Dave, who, when you are really great at Waldstein, you would never know that he has such terribly slow walk speed or anything like that. He looks like an incredibly fluid character here. Uh, and while Tennyson did get a lot of damage onto Hyde initially, we did have a great counter hit coming out. And now what Hyde excels at both the player and the character is getting you into the corner quickly and in a hurry and getting a huge combo here. 200 EXS has Vorpal. There's everything in their favor right now, but the Creeping Edge does get Tannison out. Doesn't matter, those throws once again doing work for Hyde because Tannison's not teching and not expecting it. Do you have a counter yeah. hit here though? Yeah, found the uh, the EX 360 right there. Once again, ADP into the EX cancel to keep themselves safe and hide. Now tying it up. Uh, and this is one thing that's very important, like you say, with high, both hide and hide, uh, being very good at putting the opponent into the corner. This is the fault of Waldstein. Uh, he mm -hmm. does not have fast options to get out of it if he does not have the need to spend. So you are able to just get a lot of pressure and force them to use system mechanics that are not into their favor, which you see happening right here. Just like, okay, I just have to block. I have to figure out what you're doing, figure out my way out. And Ooh. we found it with 360C. Yeah, there is invincibility on the startup of that. So really important to know for Tannison. And just got that seventh block. Ooh, spent a little bit of EXS there. Another veil off from Hyde, just trying to maintain their advantage. But the 360 coming out again from Tannison. Ooh, one of those new moves from Waldstein. Love seeing yeah, that because, ooh, it's just it's some Potemkin level stuff right there. Yeah, his uh, his power geysers are very, very scary and can be hard to deal with. You saw Hyde actually try to go for a, uh, a fireball. Oh, but you saw Hyde try to go for a fireball, not able to get it to connect. But Tannison will get the swipe to connect at the very end, but missed oh, the, the pick up for the VO. That's unfortunate because that could have been huge, and it really could have been Tannison's game right there. This is still a one-hit game, one touch. And there it is, one touch with the grab that we've been highlighting the entire time. Hyde is going to take that one and move on. Yeah, that was, there was so much back and forth right at the very end right there. I saw uh, with Major Win 
uh, and major top eight, you know, back to back, basically every single event. Uh, someone who was, uh, you saw in the early stages playing Londrekia, saying, so, hey, this character is very good, I think they're pretty strong, but sort of on the wavelength of what a lot of people have been saying, switching over to Carmine and showing the strength of this character in this version. Yeah, Carmine is incredibly powerful in this version, and you're already seeing it here. And I did get confirmation is Micaiah, so thank you so much, Chad. I really appreciate your help on that. Um, Micaiah doing really well here. Uh, going ahead, using that CS, getting the 100 EXS. Oh, wow. That was a brave button push, but it ended up working out well in their favor. Yeah, you saw Defiant really just trying to open them up with the repeated dives again and again, seeing like, okay, are you going to actually respect this, or are you going to, you know, just get knowledge checked here? But Micaiah was ready for it, but they weren't ready for the 2-2-B to connect with the puddle at the very end. Going to give Defiant the corner here and should put him in the blood house. Yep. Set up afterwards, making sure all those pools are there, because then you just have poor Lene is trapped. Overhead comes out, second overhead, and then the side switch, and that time not ready for it going to be able to put them into the corner and then pick it up here with the EX. Yeah, Makai's defense in the beginning of that setup was actually very, very good, though, uh, being able to uh, dash block out and still block the cross-up. So it's excellent stuff, and the further this game goes on, I think the further that they'll be able to get out of those situations a lot better, but they just aren't able to get out of these stagger situations right now. No. Define is really good at setting up those stagger pressures as well. CS coming out there for Makai. Not getting really anything for it. <laughs> Speaking of uh, cutting off an avenue of entry, the way that Define is like, air is mine, ground is mine, I am both air and ground control, and you do not have any permission to go. It's tra yeah, trapped it in is. the Bloodhouse again, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's one of the hard parts of this matchup right there. You can't press like that when the bomb is set. It was hidden under the puddle, though, so you just have to remember what the Carmine did. It's always very, very scary. Yeah, just want to spend... Yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go. We're gonna get the CS there. I mean, might as well make sure that you have that guarantee just to end up closing out the round, but it wasn't necessary, but was very cool. It's a it's a good habit to force uh, as yeah. well because if you if you can get into a situation at the end where you can use a CS to keep a combo going but you get some free extra meter it's always something very beneficial to do so you know that's just your if that's your muscle memory I always recommend you do it um, I am interested in I'm curious why Defiant didn't go for two two C at the end of that last combo right there instead of for the little reset but. Um, you know, it is what it is. And just like that, Makai is saying, I don't like what it is, so I'm going to make it my own, taking early aggression into their favor this time. You know, this is how they kind of started the first game of the last round as well, but it was one of those things where I felt like Defiant was trying to figure out their footing, figure out the way Makai was playing, and now that they figured it out, I feel like poor Lene just kind of pays rent in this corner. Uh, but, ooh, that time was challenged. And now Defiant stuck in the corner, just hitting a throw back the other way. That is such a great way to use the charged move as well to get the knockdown and get a combo afterwards. Yeah, oh, risky shield right there. You could have gotten fuzzy and blown up for that, but it's uh, showing the readiness for Micaiah to try to do whatever they can to take it back as Defiant. As soon as they gain that corner control, it's been almost impossible for them to get out. And, and it's not like for Micaiah's lack of trying, they've been using no. a lot of tools. I mean, again, Lene has more jumps than the average character. She can use her roll to get out of there. She can use a new system mechanic with a creeping edge to get out of there, but she just can't. And that is really due to Defiant's excellent control of the space. We see them controlling the space and controlling the health bars now, actually opening up with that uh, delay pressure, using the CS to guarantee the confirm. 2 c VO to be able to strip the cycle off of Makaya, but Makaya gets a nice dash block throw into their favor. Ooh. Defiant just changing it, and there, I, you know, you briefly saw that there was there was a creeping edge trying to get out, but it didn't go quite far enough, and it was like Makaya went straight into the waiting arms of Defiant, and Defiant said, oh, thank you so much, the game is mine. Characters doing some dishonest strike throw that can tend to be pretty, pretty strong. But we won't yeah. have to worry about that right now. Not as we get now. Big Black versus Hyde. Mm, interesting, using that 6-6-C from Hyde, or I'm, excuse me, from Big Black, the names are Switch. There we go. Thank you so much, production, you're the best. Um, Using it to start off, and now Hyde stuck in the corner does get grid broken as well, and Big Black winning the cycle, which is very, very important, and going to probably win this next one unless Hyde really gets a lot off of this. Yeah, that's actually huge. That was a big shift in the momentum. 
Yeah, but unfortunately was not able to find the, the combo that they were looking for in Big Black and to take advantage of that draw opportunity. Be able to go into the spider web. Oh, missed the setup though yeah. for the 3 jail. That's un... Mm. I would say that's unfortunate, but Big Black was able to recover pretty gracefully there and getting the chain shift as well. But Hyde uses his veil off, knocks Big Black way out of the way. We're returning to that neutral center, but it doesn't matter. Big Black taking the first round. Yeah, being able, I, I love from Big Black just saying like, hey, I'm going to hold down back. I'm going to wait for you to come to me, recognizing who's the beat down in this kind of matchup and trying to, you know, just play that very, very uh, defensive play style. But Hyde has accepted that and said, hey, you're going to play defensive? Fine. I'm going all the way in, get counter hit mm -hmm. with the 2 a I think that's a really great counter. Look at this damage and the Black Orbiters extending the combo as well. Big Black just jumps out of there like it's nothing. And then using that chain shift to keep it safe because Hyde was going to be in a world of hurt, kind of like he is now. We do have the spider web set up there back to the corner from whence we came. Spider web set up here as well. Gonna have, yeah, it's gonna be able to use the EXDP version of that. That time does get all of the spider web set up that they need and has a huge bar of grid if they wanna go ahead and see yes, it. They're building up plenty, but Celestial now for Big Black. Yeah, I tried to go for a reset right there, but instead they're just going to get a DP punish after that a little, uh, you know, uh, aggressive play from Hyde right there to take the first game into their favor of our first match of top eight winners. Yeah, we're already in the top eight winners. Thank you to everybody who entered today. Uh, we had quite a big bracket. And also thank you to our bracket runners and everybody's working behind the scenes to make sure that this runs smoothly, that we can have a constant stream of content and great matches for you here tonight on TNS. Yep. Yeah, definitely. There's been no breaks on the action so far. Like we said no. at the beginning, if, if if you even go to the bathroom for 20 seconds, you're going to miss out on a, a whole game being played. Yeah, that I really do feel. I mean, we've this is our fifth game. I feel like I've blinked and we're already here. We're already in the top eight. That's crazy. Uni is I mean, I wouldn't say it's the fastest game in the world, but it can certainly seem like it, especially because the action is nonstop like this. Hyde once again using all of those throws to open up the opportunity for him to get the initial hits in. Oh, uh, yep, did just get enough to go ahead and change shift there, which is looking scary, but the range on Biakia is ridiculous. And I say that as somebody who played the character. Yeah, this is just showing you the how comfortable Big Black is with this character, knowing the exact ranges that these two Cs are able to connect, and then using those same opportunities to push Hyde back into the corner. Set it up one more time. One, two, three, Spider Jail. Yep. yep. One, one. There's oh, two. Okay. Yeah, so they were going. They were they were going for the easy two setup because they already had the one on the ground. So they didn't okay. go for the third final one. But they just accidentally messed up the last input, which honestly gave Hyde an opportunity to just block out of a less scary mix up and now take this back into their favor. Will cash out on the VO and should be able to kill uh, kill here with the IWEX. Yeah, nice way to use the IWEX there to end it up. God, that animation. I love that they just give, no, he lives, but they gave French Fred the red crayon. <gasps> the 2-2 two, yeah. two EXC. Oh, yeah. nicely done. So, I can talk about what happened there. I think I know, I think I know what happened. Because right now, Big Black is not letting us think at all. No! With finding this first big uh, hit right here and just immediately go back into set play. Not going to delay it this time. That's the good mix. Oh, we did get a tech. <laughs> So that kick back into the corner. Hyde, if you want to win against Hyde, it really feels like you have to just tech the throws. You have to anticipate that those are going to be coming. I was actually thinking one was going to come right there. As soon as he landed, there it was. But that time he was a little bit too far away due to the way the Big Black was using the shield mechanic, which does push you back a little bit. And that time using the 6-6-C to catch right at the very end and back from the corner whence you came, Hyde child. Yeah, not gonna allow him to get out of it this quickly. Set it up this time. We're gonna see Hyde VO now. Instead, they have been going for a lot of uh, dash blocks uh, on the initial wake up in the beginning of those uh, of those matches. So uh, I do really like that adjustment right there from uh, from Hyde to be like, hey, I'm gonna be aggressive. I'm actually gonna try to you know with the Oreo. I think that's great. Honestly, I think this is a really good adjustment. I love seeing I love seeing adjustments at character select. 
because you get the idea that the player is really thinking about what's coming up. Unfortunately, they were not thinking about what was coming up, down, all around, left, right, every which way with Defiant. Defiant using every one of, another player that uses every one of their character's movesets to completely negate what you have. And just like that, a few seconds in, Mario is nearly dead. Yeah, I mean, that's the scary part of, uh, you know, Defiance Carmine is always ready to just press as much as possible. Nice use of Divine Thrust CS to steal your turn. Miss to steal your turn from dead in the corner. Thanatos getting all of those giant hits. It was interesting because Thanatos was on the other side, too. Not a huge deal, but something that you do have to keep in mind can happen. Speaking of sandwich situations, Carmine using the blood wheel to just keep Oreo... No, darn it, you got me saying it! Uh, to keep Oreo trapped in the corner. And just one more hit will do it, but... Ooh, Celestial on the side of Mario goes ahead and uses all of it. Just threatening, walking back and forth, defiant though, not falling for the bait. And a gold throw after two just throws right back. I love that for Mario, just like you saw them not shielding any of the pressure, knowing that it's like, hey, defiant has to go for basically all mids here or some reactable overheads. I'm going to do that to try to steal the cycle back. And you saw it almost work out in their favor, but defiant was just ready a little bit more, just like they're ready right here, even after a little trade. Mm -hmm. try to take Counter? Some favor yeah. yeah. Mm. Veiloth does come out, though, not going to warrant them a lot here because Mario is going to use just those easy lows to come in and then ending it right, that combo right there. But we're getting a little bit more here from Defiant. I mean, Defiant is it's always deceptive looking at Carmine's health being like, oh, he's dying. Well, he does, you know, spend his own health to do some of these moves. Yeah, and that's always something you have to be uh, like wary about, especially in this version of the game. Is uh, you know, Defiant or <laughs> Defiant, sorry, Carmine used to be able to do it uh, with a lot more freedom, but with the higher damage of Uni Two, it's always a little bit riskier to do that. Now you see Mario able to take the cycle, but not able to use that CS to keep themselves safe right there. So Defiant found their opportunity to press and should be able to close it out in one more interaction. I like the idea of using that blood prison to go ahead and just charge to be able to take the cycle, go ahead and chain shift, you know, get as much meter as Defiant could during that. It, not that it's a power play, but that it was a, hey, this is going to enable me to finish out the round the way I want to and to close it efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something that you see a lot in the, the mid screen with Okay, now we're getting Mario Biakia. They're bringing out everything in the kitchen sink to try to deal with the uh, the Carmine. Yeah. Um, but it, in the mid screen, uh, you don't have the same ability to get the bomb sets and puddles. And you, they already had one puddle down. So they're like, okay, I'm just going to keep the puddle, use a long range option to be able to steal my turn back, and then charge to gain the cycle instead of trying to go for uh, a crazier mix up that can even be backdashed out of in uh, a lot of situations. I'm interested to see how Mario does in this particular matchup. Not that I think Biakia can do poorly, but I want to see how much Mario knows about this. And clearly, the pocket Biakia is working well. Pocket or not, yeah, I mean, it's sitting up nicely. Yeah, this is a uh, you know it's a character uh, like Waldstein who can very much reward underneath fundamentals very well. Yes. Someone like Mario, who very very fundamentally driven, can take a character like this to some big advantages. Oh, that was a really nice way using the overhead too, and you're getting the ground setup. Ooh, the 6-6-B six, six did not work out quite because uh, Defiant just jumped out of it. But a grab onto the other side. I like that because, you know, if you were keeping count with Mario, you know that that spider web is still on the floor. Yeah, I think they were hoping that that toss would actually put them into the web yeah. to be able to kill off that, but it was just slightly too far out. And this is actually something that you're seeing right at the beginning for Mario. Going for those two Bs is very, very good at stopping a lot of the ground movement that Carmine has options with. Um, and he can't be as free in the air as we've seen in other matchups, but he can Ooh. get the EX command grab with the uh, Celestial State, so that's extra damage right there. Yeah, and all of that health came back too, which is pretty huge for a character like Carmine. Ooh, just slides right underneath the spider web, but Mario's doing a really great job pressuring around and underneath them. There was a good overhead too to put Defiant in the corner, but Defiant uses the throw to put Mario into the corner now. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be a big recovery period where Defiant can take their turn back and that blood wheel was just coming back too. This is a big counter. 
Yeah, slower reversal, so Defiant was able to uh, still recover in time to block on the 236C, able to take their turn, but Mario not afraid of any of these run-up attempts to challenge with a throw. No, using the 22X series to just try and create some pressure here. Wow, good lord, Defiant, you hit so hard, why do you do that? Again, same situation, but doesn't have CS to make it safe, so this is going to be a lot of damage once again in Defiant's favor. Yeah, it's going to be just enough to take the round right there. Even had that CS was uh, trying to get a little bit of meter, but it's only in about seven or so right at the beginning. So Mario mm -hmm. finds a third wreck a hit, but not able to create a big opportunity for that. Ooh, he just opens up with some 2-2-As, two -two making sure that everything is looking good here. We get the setup once again. Ooh, lots of spider webs there. You have to be careful where you stand. And there was a creeping edge that came out for Defiance, but doesn't quite work out for them. Uh, Veiloth, very aggressive here. Let's see what he's gonna do with it. He's got a ton of time though. Yeah, you're gonna uh, probably see like Blood Rain if they get that opportunity, which I don't yeah. think they will anymore. As the Akia combos take about a year and a half to finish right here, so we'll be bringing Defiant all the way back into the corner. One, two. Does he go for the triple setup, but does force them to dash walk into the first two. I really like the way Mario is playing this. Nicely done, bringing it to a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. This is uh, not what I expected for Mario to be going into this matchup. Uh, I do know that... Uh, like I just expected the Wagner, right? Like I think that that's yeah. a character that they've been very comfortable on. They've played this matchup in the past and have shown pretty good success of dealing with it. I don't think it's that negative for them, but they're not feeling confident in it today, and they are feeling confident into the Biakia. Well, honestly, with that last game, I'd say confidence well deserved because yep. it played out very nicely, especially moves like that with the 6-6 seed that you're able to, you know, create the range and get some damage in on the space, prevent Carmine from coming in as closely. But now even with Defiant, you know, trying to throw all of these blood puddles out and create the damage situations that he really wants to, Mario's doing a really good job on the defense. Now I was about to say, watch him get opened up because Common Davis curse and I am prone to do that, but actually both of them are doing a great job defensively yeah it was you know mario was channeling uh their big black energy right there with just holding down back and yep. getting through everything but defiant still found an option to open them up throw tech out will actually allow them to recover safely and now force the dash block out for defiant now they're going to be looking for like an aggressive dash block or an aggressive ex press out but Mario not going to allow that to happen. Nope. Throw tech gives it to Defiant. Ooh, used a move with a lot of recovery does Mario, which was unfortunate because now that was giving Defiant the opportunity. But Mario is finding such sneaky ways to get damage in. I would make some kind of a spider joke, but they write themselves at this point. And Mario is going to go ahead and take the first round. Yeah, you know... Uh, Mario is looking really stuck on the, the wall that is Defiant right there uh, at the very end, just constantly keeping him down. But Defiant not going to allow that. Found the actual cross up for the early Ooh. hit and found a great counter hit confirmed. I love the way that Defiant is so willing to combo off of any stray hit, and it just really speaks to them as a player. Not just as a Carmine player, as a Uni player, but as a fighting game player, they are ready to go as soon as they see something connect. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the skill of someone who's played so many different characters in the cast to a very high level, is that you have to be ready to do anything you can, just like they were ready to guard thrust to try to get out of that uh, pressure sequence right there, but Mario was ready to have that combo but couldn't find the pickup. No, that was, that was unfortunate, and... Now Defiant taking their turn back here. That green shield, though, doing a lot of work for Mario, and this time the EX does end up working out, resetting everything back into the center of the screen. Overhead does not hit, but Mario did win the Vorpal Cycle there. Yeah, and found an Assault JC, but not able to get a big connection. Blood Rain going to keep it safe for Defiant, keep their turn. And now you see both players trying to slowly yeah. stagger each other out, but Defiant is the one who found the opportunity to defy Mario's victory right there. Yeah, gosh, 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. We're in one of, one of those situations. Mario starting it off. Slow. Oh, but 2-2-X two, two series is just so good. Yeah, it's also very good versus uh, a lot of what Carmine wants to do at those right. ranges because normally they're looking to just be throwing out the uh, J4Bs, but it doesn't allow you to do it as it hits you that high into the air. Mm -hmm. 
again, just so willing on a single button hit to combo to get something huge like this does get any recoverable health back that you get for Carmine, which is great. The puddles are already down. Oh, that time um, the 2-2-C didn't end up working out for Mario, but it was worth the shot. I think Defiant was far enough away that he could see what was coming. Yeah, it's it's also one of those things to do at those ranges uh, as the Biakia. It's pretty safe. Um, but unfortunately, this last little interaction is not as safe right Woo there. Oh, bro, with good backdash out from Defiant. Oh, I, ooh, that was scary. I mean, it was the right choice. It ended up working out. But man, backdash is always really terrifying. A good backdash once again. That time, though, because the wheel was already out, even though Mario was using that EX move, there is a bit of a startup on it. So Defiant able to take it, but it looked like Mario was making quite the comeback. Using for all of us. Yep. Uh, and really quickly, I see that that Matcherino is going up. I've been noticing people donating in chat. Exclamation point Matcherino if you want to get those donations in to support our players. Thank you so much for everybody who's done so. Yeah, you can support, you know, one of these two Linnaes potentially getting into that prize pot as right now Revert has been taking the advantage uh, in this set, already bringing Makaya to the corner. Yeah, and ooh, good overhead to open up. Yeah, Revert is doing such a great job here. Makaya has not gotten the chance. We did get a bit of a tech on the throw there. I don't know why I said bit of. It was a tech on the throw, but there was no bit of anything coming out from Makaya as Revert takes that first round of the perfect. Yeah, and I think this is what you're going to be want to be uh, like seeing from Revert is they have just been showing dominance of the of the mirror match, which can be a struggle for some people, right? Not you're not always used to fighting your character and knowing exactly what they're going to do against you, and you can already see Makaya is just holding down back, being like, okay, I'm going to be on defense, I'm going to wait for you to do something crazy and try to punish you for that, but Revert has not given you that opportunity until just now. And there's that force function I was telling you about. Right, right. So, ooh, there's a shield there. Oh, I thought that was going to actually be a grid break because I thought there was still, um, Revert was holding down shield, but he wasn't. So that was good luck on their part. Both of them working with 200 EXS and then Revert goes ahead and tries to use some, or decides to use some there, gets the grab. The chain shift though is challenged from Revert. Said, I know what your character can do because I'm playing the character and you're dead. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, uh, I, I do like that use of the EX Kuga right there. You saw both in the mid screen and towards the corner right there um, because it is an ender that allows you to uh, push them further as the combo is going, right? You're not going to be getting any extra damage for hitting them. So you can just keep that corner distance going and trying to put them into the Linnea win condition box. You know, we put them into that grand blue zone. Um, but, <laughs> uh, you know, we didn't get to see that into full effect as the second one did kill. So we'll have to see what can happen right now. Or yep. if Makaya can be uh, the one to take it back, but a good 5A at the start for Revert is what they're looking to see. I liked Makaya's idea of jumping into there and setting out that air Kuga, but it didn't end up working out because Linnea is also, in addition to the rest of her things, she's a fast little hamster and was able to run underneath it. And like you pointed out, Tabby with that 5A was able to get it. I love Revert's movement. The, the dashing forward and then those immediate neutral jumps or the back dashes right there, the back dash. Thank you for doing it exactly as I said it. And then the grab afterwards. Ooh, shielded that. That time wasn't able to get the grab in, but Revert with the jump Kuga trying to set something up. Makai is doing their very, very best to hold down back, but when you do that, you're prone to being thrown. Yeah, and it's very hard for Linnea to pressure out of those situations as her buttons that cover those ranges tend to be a little bit more committal. So if you guess wrong on what your option is, your opponent's going to blow you up for it. And you can already see that happening right there, right? Like uh, Mikai was like, okay, I'm going to go press 2C. I'm tired of you backdashing away from me. It's my turn to get the party started. Well, this is a really great start for Makaya. As soon as I say that though, the DP does come out from Revert and was able to put them back to neutral. Just going back for it. Gah, Revert's movement. I know this is a fast character and he is just lightning fast. Again, another player who is so willing to confirm on the slightest touch and is doing a great job maintaining the quarter position. Again, the movement with the back dashes, these little tiny neutral jumps that end up and sees that, you know, we're not down back again anymore. It's time to open you up and that's going to go ahead and do it in, as, as we say, well, as people say in the South, quick, fast, and in a hurry. I'm originally from the South, so I guess I can say that. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a... Uh... In a couple of gorillas. Nana say she do be a she do be that kind of character. 
Yeah, and you can see already really early on finding a, a big hit, actually. I was not expecting that to come right out of the gate from Bolt Strike, but here they are now pressuring Tannison into the corner. And like we saw in our other match with Tannison, if they get into the corner, it can be kind of scary, but they were able to find that opportunity to 3C out and now get the corner of their own. Oh my goodness, already getting the 360 started. Bolt has just not... I mean, Bolt had a chance to play because, you know, Tennyson's not at a perfect, but even there, even though that wasn't a, you know, complete combo and there was a bit of a drop in the middle, doesn't matter, the damage is still there and you weren't teching. Yeah, and you'll see that from a lot of players, like you just saw from Tennyson right there. Uh, right. They're trying to go for delay tech, and uh, the players are just choosing to end their combos early to gain that little bit of extra damage instead of allowing their opponent to get that full delay tech and a good throw into the fireball in the corner is very scary. Is he going to try to create an opportunity to mix, but Tannison's blocking it out. Ooh, and there, just what a way to counter that as well. And there it is. It's like, you never want to say they're dead until they're actually dead, just in case, but with Wildstein, you can usually be pretty sure. Yeah, if they're, if they're in that uh, red health range right there and you landed a counter hit command grab, it can tend to be bye-bye birdie for the opponent. Right there, you're seeing the 2-2, uh, the power guys are coming out. But full strike, not allowing it to scare them. This composure into the corner. Can you just make a bye-bye birdie reference? Because now I'm yeah. really happy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Bolstrike's <laughs> also very happy with that yeah, because no they're kidding. finding more opportunities to open them up. Tannison did find a 5A to be able to connect, but not able to find the full pickup until a little reset afterwards. No, but I mean, you know, reset happens. The veil off not going to work in Bolstrike's favor. So sad. They're going to eat all of this damage and throw spin to win, baby. Yeah. We may not be in Vegas yet, although Uni2 will be at Vegas for EVO 2024. So make sure you miss. don't miss that. But, uh, oh, yeah, whew. oh, yeah, yeah, it's very this. This is just very funny for me. Uh, within our within our locals, we have a Waldstein player that I play pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. Um, and they that so what Tannison did at the very end was a reset to go into the command grab because a lot of people will just tech out and then be like, oh, you know, okay, I'm holding I'm holding this combo, and then you reset them with a the command grab. Our player drops it so much and then tries to use a command grab to, uh, to save it that uh, I've learned that you can just fuzzy jump out of that and you, uh, you can uh, maintain yourself to be pretty safe but it's not something that you should be uh, expecting every single time because you can get blown up for it just like Tandison is using these jc's to blow up both drugs health bars yeah and they're just evaporating poor poor bolt just not getting not getting a chance and Tannison is so in control right now Okay, I'm really interested to see what Bolstruck does here. Oh, stuck out a button, expected Tannison to stay on the ground and go for one of those more grounded movements, but Tannison had gone ahead and jumped. It was serendipitous for Bo for him, but uh, oy, Bolstruck is just going to take close to the face. Tannison one round away from moving on. Yeah, just finding those opportunities, just like that, trying to go for swipes again, just force Bolstruck to be thrown into a plus frame situation using an EX clap cancel uh, at the very end. But Bolstruck is just wanting to stay away from it because they find opportunities like this where they can hit them out and gain big grid break throws just like that. Yeah, that that was that's a really big swing in momentum for Bolstruck here. And then, oh, just taking the entire Waldstein elbow to the face there. As soon as Bolt struck, I really felt like got a great position. Tannison takes it back into their favor. And, you know, corner to corner. I like to call that space ghost, coast to coast for all of my, all of my millennials out there. I appreciate I really, you. I really like that from Tannison going through the slow overhead, knowing that how much of Bolt Strike can uh, like can go for delay tech to just use that to catch them out of it. But a nice catch on their pressure rate. They're using that three frame, 360 C be able to keep them into the corner one more time found another overhead but look in the low to close it out oh man i was thinking that was bolt struck's moment but it was not it was not bolt struck's moment at all which stage is stage known as park shout outs to park <laughs> shout outs to park every time when we were commentating together like go to park go to park and you have it tabby it's happened it feels like home here for us uh, us net play grinders of, of the old days and i like that with these two players who uh you know we're also grinding the older games bringing out right. some new strategies that you don't normally see right there nice use of the 3c after the cs saying hey i was able to screen freeze and figure out exactly what you want to do speaking of screen freeze using that cs there for the dp for revert but then hide taking it right back this is the, probably our most back and forth match that we've had so far 
yeah, these are two players who both are very aggressive in nature, like we've seen in all their matches. So now they're very much going to be butting heads in their in, in their game I, uh, gameplay ideologies. And just like that, you're seeing Hyde be like, okay, I'm going to stand right outside of your range and try to press out of anything you do. And they're going to be using that advantage to take the first round and then get a great start on to the second. I think it's a really interesting choice that was made for Hyde to have slightly more range than his counterpart just because it makes this particular matchup very interesting. Okay, there we go. Hyde already shifted to using ADP and uh, EX follow right there very early on with this set, which will make Revert a little bit more cautious and could find potentials for BDPs to be coming out or other reversal opportunities and actually have them really mm -hmm. Ooh. Nice way to finish that there. What a defiant, defiant DP from Revert, but not going to be able to, or from Hyde, excuse me. But Revert is going to be able to take that round. The overhead, I like that start because it was really different from Hyde and now is able to change up the tempo just a tiny bit and then get those Black Orbiters in the overheads to bring Revert into the corner. But Revert already shielding right now, trying to just gain grid where they can and stop Hyde's pressure a little bit. And they find an opportunity to get a good 2B starter right here. Not going to go for a side swap, though. Just choosing to cash out with the IW while they can. I mean, I would do if I was Revert. What a veil off, though. I mean, I get it. Revert was running straight in. That worked out really nicely for Hyde. Oh, but a counter hit coming out from... From Revert, but Hyde immediately takes it back, and then Revert takes it back. It's like table tennis match here right now. It's anybody's game. I love that from Revert right there. We're... <sighs> we didn't finish. <laughs> we have to look Hyde keeping it going, making the comeback. Ooh, that CS. CS afterwards kept Hyde so safe. That was really scary. Okay, the low afterwards, just the throw, and then... Oh, there... My goodness, so uh, Revert was able to tech in the air and recover and then be able to just open up hide with a low. That was so, that was, my my heart's racing from this. Oh I my both gosh, these players are just back and forth, just like scrambling again and again. I do want to comment though, Revert like had been recognizing how much Hyde had been wanting to be in the air. So when they opted to meet them in the air, being like, hey, we're gonna go to air to air and already skipping past that layer one and going psych, dive kick. I'm gonna blow you up for doing any kind of option. And just calling that out so early is just showing how on point Revert is for this set. It was, it was fabulously done. Ooh, and again, like you had just pointed out, Tabby, as if they wanted to immediately demonstrate the fact that they're going at it air to air. But that time, though, Hyde does take advantage. No jump scare this time. And a DP punish going to be coming out. You, you know, Hyde turning off the aggression a little bit to find that opportunity to... Oh, solid. Well, didn't want to cash out, so just 3.6k. No, not the... Ooh, backdash and went in for a throw from Revert. Hyde is going to be able to take advantage of that because of the recovery frames afterwards. Using the chain shift there as well, doesn't need to spend anything else going into this next round with 200 EXS, which is pretty huge. Yeah, it's always going to be giving you uh, a lot of potential to go into these rounds with a win and 200 meter on deck. Just like that, you see ADP coming out and use the EX Orbiter to keep their turn to find a big hit like this. Ooh, throw coming out for Reaver. Uh, DP comes out for Hyde. It had been working really well, but unfortunately there, it does not pay off. Revert doing a great job. Wow, thank you for that massive contribution to the um, Maturino, by the way. Thank you so much. Just wanted to point out that was huge. Yeah, a big $75 donation coming in. Always appreciate that, just like these players do. And Hyde right now must have seen that pop up because they're trying to make sure that they stay in the money. But Revert, yeah, presses them out. I do, I like this. So. Revert has been just way more committal to pressing when they think Hyde's going to EP with the amount of times that ADPs happen. Uh, ADPs are not invulnerable like BDPs are, so if the opponent tries to do it, you just get a good old-fashioned counter hit starter. Ooh, big counter hit. Speaking of which, this is going to open up Revert really nicely for Hyde. And then getting the hard knockdown. Ooh, I love that move. The veil off because Hyde was sliding through at the time. The veil off didn't connect. This may end up being a perfect. And then you have a big veil off, and then the then the IWEX coming out. Yeah. Uh, that VO is always so scary to do uh, because your 
Uh, it's a very common setup for high to do EX Orbiter or land and then 6-6-C because it lands you cross up and you want to be to be able to maintain the corner. And there is a timing that I think you can VO, but it's very, very tight. And if you're even just slightly delayed on that window, gonna, it skates out of there just like Hyde did there to tie this game up 1-1. Yeah, I really like that. There was a question in chat. I think this is ADP. We're saying ADP. So the A version of the DP for this. Uh, sorry if that's not coming through clearly and if there was any confusion on that. The A6, the 623A. There you go. Right, good shields right there, trying to prevent some of that chip damage and try to gain that cycle into their favor. Great use of the creeping edge, though, to be able to regain control and gain a little bit of grid. Did choose to cash out, out though, and give Revert the cycle initially. Mm -hmm. Now what's happening? Gosh, so much blocking on the side of Revert. I really like the way Revert is using that shield, choosing to use it at really specific times in order to gain grid to win that Vorpal cycle and then not using it at really scary times where you could get grid broken like Hyde did right there. Yeah, that was a great reaction from Revert right there, recognizing the green shield was happening, so they had have, they have the chance to go for a run-up throw. But Hyde not going to let that phase them, knowing that, hey, I'm at, a, I'm at a little bit of health. This is my time to shine. Time to make a Twitter clip and finds a big opportunity right at the get-go to be able to take the first round of our final match here. I really thought that was going to be all Revert. I thought, yep, Revert's got it. They're doing a fabulous job. And then Hyde was like, but what if I won? And then he did. But now Revert starting off this round particularly strong, running Hyde into the corner on the hard knockdown, trying to get this advantageous corner position, getting the knockdown here as well, and just walks away, letting Hyde hang themselves with that DP. Yeah, you've been seeing Hyde in all these matches again and again and again. Just go for DP, DP, DP. Revert finally committed to just staying away from it, not going for the normal NA pressure of trying to catch uh, catch them going for those DPs and able to punish them for it. But Hyde still finding these chances and these opportunities. Goes for the 5AB. No, I mean, pretty safe afterwards. I, I like that as an ender sometimes if you're not sure if you're going to get that hit. But now Revert opening up Hyde once again. Getting, well, okay, yeah, gonna spend here. If they want to go ahead and CS before this grids, oh no, they were, they're trying to get Celestial. They're being saucy, they're gonna get it too. Nicely done yeah. with that little charge. Being able to spend 200 meter to gain 200 meter, but they yeah. don't even need it here as long as they keep Ooh. it tight. EXD heat. That's gonna be Revert taking it 2-1 over Hyde. Really impressive stuff from Revert. I like in particularly the way that they were keep so those, you know, frames at their advantage as many times as they could, just making Wagner shine. But I'm I'm a little afraid because Tannison is very scary. Yeah, it's always something that you have to be worried about, but Wagner specifically got a couple tools that helps make this matchup a little bit more in her favor. But Waldstein has that extra damage where if you make one mistake, it can end very poorly. Good throw attack out for Tannison. Okay, nice blocking from Mario though, trying to, ooh, they were trying to get that situation where they could at least get like one charge in, but Tannison uh, challenged immediately, and then Mario losing a quarter of the health just right away. Oh, tried to go for a jump there, and then I don't know what Mario was going for there, but Tannison said it doesn't matter, you're still going into this corner, you're still losing most of your life. Yeah, I think Mario was just trying to be a little bit more aggressive, and uh, they, I saw them go for a 5A on wake up, just being like, hey, I don't think you're gonna do anything I'll actually you know, respect and try to just punish you out of it. But Tannison just keeping it clean and keeping it tight and using Jeez. that to take the first round. Tannison has really impressed me. Okay, this time we do at least get the sword charge, which is really nice for Mario. Uses it there, finally getting a little damage and was able to charge once again. Tan I'm, I'm, my eyes are on Tannison though. Right there for that reason, for finding a counter hit almost immediately. There was a flinch from Mario. I don't even know what it was supposed to be. And Tannison immediately levels up the life lead, especially after this. Yay! Yeah, it's spending a hundred there to uh, already bring it into their favor, but Mario ready to go for the 6B, but misses the 6C at the very end. So Tannison gonna be able to reset out to neutral. Mario just finds the same opportunity. Oh, and they get the Titans right there for that combo. So this should be double buff into burn. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, now burning too, which is always really scary. You have to be more aware of what's going on. But that burn and that all those charges were able to get Mario the win for that round. But what an aggressive start from Tannison. 
Yeah, immediately going for swipes and then just going for a simple ender right there. Just try to get the knockdown so they can go for a throw reset. But Mario already ready to be super active, uh, you know, with their defense and try to get out of any of these setups that Tannison wants to bring. They're, they are trying really hard. I will give them that. But Tannison is doing such a good job adapting really quickly. Mario, though, doing a great job here. Does... Nope, didn't get the burn that time. But, but is going to do a lot of damage here and is going to be able to take the round. I was... You know, sometimes as a commentator, you prepare yourself mentally for, okay, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, what are we going to talk about? And so I was mentally lining up the, okay, so, you know, Mario didn't win that round. Are we going to get the character switch? And we don't have to talk about that because Mario won. Yeah. Yeah. Mario was able to close it out. They found, they used, they pulled out the final card of the Wagner player, the full charge force function, the 30 frame overhead. But it's one of those things that if, if you're not uh, ready to immediately challenge that, the Wagner player can get a ton of advantage off of it. But Tannis is not going to let that same thing happen again as right at the start of the round, keeping the aggression going, going for the 5AB ender and getting a grid break off of that command grab. That is huge for Tannison right now. Ooh, counter hit two there, wins the grid cycle. They're going to be able to get through I was going to say, they're going to get close to 200 and already spent some. So they've got, they banked so much meter. Tannison is looking really good in the start of this particular round. Yeah, it's, you know, showing Mario just as soon as they decide to play a little bit more cautious, Tannison can fully swing that pendulum into their favor. And it's going to, you know, it might take a lot for Mario to be able to fully swing it back over because Tannison is very momentum driven. Once they get on mm -hmm. a roll, they try to keep that advantage into their favor. Great use of dive kick OS right there to escape out of that situation and find a good route. That was so great for Mario, especially at the start of this round with so much power to have. Able, like as soon as Wagner is able to get one thing going, I feel like she can just roll and roll. She's such a snowball character. And right here you see spending a little bit of that grid as well uh blocking nicely and then tex on the throw there as well trying to get oh trying to get something started not working on that perfect anymore but then was able to challenge with the ex opener and then just immediately trying to go for a simple route into a buff into a charge to get the cycle but Tannison doing great counterplay, doing exactly what you need to do if they just go for the immediate C, and there we go. 6C does give you, like, six frames of airborne right there, so able to get out of the, uh, the 360 attempt. I'm loving this play from Mario right now. Oh, God! Get the 360 slam! But then sliding in is Mario and getting a really good set of hits here. I want to see what we get to do. Oh, just being really careful, not allowing Tannison to get any hits in to create any opportunities because Mario sees that that's what Tannison is looking for. Right there, we're able to, you know, that was it. Tannison saw the opportunity and has now taken it. But a backdash from Mario and then the chain shift to keep it safe. Yeah, and trying to able to uh, use that to steal their turn back and finds a quick little gap to DP and does find the actual, the one hit counter hit route, which is very, uh, it's uncommon, but it just shows you the level of uh, prepared that Mario is on this character. Jeez Louise, I am so impressed with that gameplay from Mario right now using the dive kick again. That time though, ooh, there was a recovery and there was the slam, but it didn't work out, unfortunately for Tannison. So that means Mario is going to be moving on. Yeah, Mario taking another step further, going to be moving on for at the fullest extent. It can be very, very scary. So we'll have to see who's going to be able to take it. And already Big Black playing very cautiously, just knowing, hey, Defiant gets to be in the control of the start of this round. Which I feel, like, I feel like as the Sarugi player, you don't want to give uh, Kuon that much control. You really don't. Because you're going to get stuff like this. And then, yep, there it is. End of the throw. And then you can end it. Oh, he just to end it a little bit differently. You can end that with a 6-6-C to get a hard knockdown. But I like the setup anyway and in literally seconds big black is missing most of their health and look at all of the rings coming out you have this um the 6c coming out there as well um uh, this is ridiculous oh my god yeah. and even you this is just showing how much defiant is wanting that corner pressure right they're spending their good thrust uh pretty aggressively early on yeah okay almost yep, had a way of yeah, the Dictator Slide is going to do so much work there. Okay, going in for the A's, not finding anything. Just using the C Slide to get in there, and pfft, Sarugi said, I'm downtown, and hits the wall. That was it. I want to see more aggression out of Big Black. He's, he's letting Defiant run away with this. 
Yeah, and this is the kind of play. This is the thing that I was curious to see with Big Black. You know, this is a, a part of his playstyle that's been very fundamental to how his uh, success on Byakuya has been. But with a character like Sarugi, you have to be a little bit more, you know, you know, hold forward and keep yeah. the aggression. Good use of the two three six C there to find a big opener. Yeah, and that was, I love how you said the aggression, and right in that moment, Tabby, Big Black took the advantage. The slide didn't connect, but what did happen for Defiant was he got out of the corner and put Big Black into it. You could have punished that little bitty DP there from Big Black as the Kuon player, but, you know, keep it safe. He was a little bit further away. It could have been a bit riskier. Uh, the EX ring did come out there. Going to be able to get another ring here, and I like ending in the little flash kick as well, and... <laughs> Interestingly enough, Big Black, because of all of the excellent defense they've been doing, was into Celestial. Yeah, not going to be able to cash out with it now, though, as they're just wanting to make sure that they gain control of the cycle, because they need to find an opportunity to use it to keep themselves safe, but I don't think it nope. came out right at the very end right there, because Defiant was able to take the first game of our winner's finals up 1-0. As a reminder, this is three out of five, as it yes. is, you know, the, the finals portion of our bracket. I know, we've been flying through this, and I can't believe we're already here. Okay, we are gonna get the switch to Biakia, though. It was kind of what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I I don't hate this for Kuon. I think, again, Kuon has the tools. Kuon has a lot of tools. He's got really great zoning tools. He's got fantastic mid-range normals. Like, you can just hit from downtown pretty much wherever you are. He's got really decent mix. And then, you know, with the flash kick, you have a great way to even have... It's almost like a Guilty Gear-like burst that's built into your toolkit. You have a lot of things at your disposal. But if Big Black gets in and is able to get these really great setups that we saw earlier on the Biakia, it might be lights out for Defiant. Yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult, right? Because I think a lot of those tools that Kulon has can be very advantageous to somebody who's not, uh, you know, so scary with their defense and very rarely allow, gives their opponents the opportunity to make these big plays happen like that. And you can already see it right here with the aggression, just staying very calm with the staggers right now, not trying to do a whole lot. And at the moment that Defiant runs up, hit him with a throw to toss him back into the corner. Yeah, I was afraid for that shield for a little bit because as we'd seen earlier, Big Black had gotten a lot of grid breaks from the 2-2-X series, just being able to hit that on people who were holding shield. Defiant was able to get Big Black back to full screen, which is a really great place for Kuon. We did get the grid cycle. He was trying to go for the 6 6 C overhead, or um, it could have been the, um, the jump C as well, but it didn't end up working out. Just blocking again. Defiant's defense is excellent. Yeah, and you saw that right at the very end. Oh, wait. Okay, Big Black now able to take their opportunity back. You see Defiant, like, being very aggressive with these shield attempts right there. I think Big Black's trying to find a read on exactly when Defiant wants to be doing that to try to blow them up for it, but the projectile coming out from downtown is going to be able to stop Big Black from keeping their pressure up. Yeah, throw after that combo as well. Ooh, he got... Uh, Defiant got the 5B in there. Looks like he was going for the 2B afterwards, but doesn't matter. Using that A series that has all the columns. Oh, he doesn't kill! Oh god, there he comes in! And then he's this, this that, six, was six, so, that was so smart from Big Black being able yeah. to go for the 2PC. I've been seeing them try to go for the all these like air pressures to be like, okay, snipe you out, and then having the recognition to know Defiant's gonna delay tech here to try to steal the round and get the OTG is huge. That was incredible. I love that play from Big Black. Really excellently done. Ooh. Using the float, which is the force function series for um, Kuon, to get over and get the overhead to get things started, switching sides, sliding in that 2B er, is huge from Kuon, so you've got to be really careful where your toes are. Here we go. Nice CS. You're going to be able to find that red flash to go for the 236C, take their turn back and reset it back out. Defiant just willing to take the throw, yep. though. Interesting. It was an interesting choice. Uh, didn't get hit by the 2-2 series that time. Does get hit by the 2-2-C there, though, from Big Black. Wasn't able to get the 6-6-C off from Big Black, but again, just blocking. Such passiveness, such passive gameplay. It's actually really disconcerting. Yeah, I mean, it's it, compared to what we've been seeing uh, Defiant play throughout uh, throughout this tournament so far, seeing them play very, very cautious is always a little worrisome. And I love this from Big Black, just recognizing, hey, you keep up backing here off this pressure, and I'm just going to stop you from doing that. I'm not going to allow it. I'm going to throw tech, and I'm going to try to steal this cycle 
as long as nothing crazy happens. Okay, the overhead coming out, but Big Black still was able to get Celestial afterwards. If Defiant doesn't do something massive here, does use the ring setup, I was going to say, you can kill with that. 3.4k, but Big Black coming in with 200 EXS, a very, very great position to start this off with. Yep, carrying all the way into the corner, probably going to be able to get their setup in at the very end. No, they dropped it. And Defiant not getting hit by that 6-6, six, six, or the 2-2-C, two, two excuse me. And Tex the throw afterwards and was able to chain shift after to see what Big Black was up to. All right, 3C ring cancel right there, immediately just trying to find an opportunity to open Big Black up. Not giving these, them these chances like we've seen previously to allow, you know, I, but I, both players are not allowing either player a moment to think, because as soon as that no. happens, something crazy does to just completely stop the pace of the game. I wanted to point out briefly, too, that Big Black was in Celestial. They actually, because they didn't spend anything, are in Celestial again. Defiant didn't allow them to get anything there, but Big Black sitting in it now. That's going to be a big damage increase. We got the spider webs set up. Tech on the throw, though, which is going to get rid of all of those spider webs, and this is going to allow Defiant to get a chance back, to get a turn to try something, but a great throw back into the corner from Big Black. Yeah, and Big Black is still being able to maintain the cycle at the very end right there. Nice roll through right there. So because of the roll, not able to cancel that into a chain shift uh, and allowed Defiant to get the full punish that they're looking for. Not able to kill just yet. Charge ring, going to have to, you know, give them the pressure they need to open up one more time. Great blocks and great shields from Big Black. Yes, and, and the was going to... Of that. Wow! That was just raw. Yeah, that raw was... Raw 2, 3, 6. That was that recognition of knowing I know you're gonna you have to do a delay to open me up here, and I'm just gonna have to wait for that exact opportunity for you, when you decide to delay and punish you for it. So you saw them. I'm pretty. I, they couldn't have even been buffering that because they were just blocking the whole time. So they were just patiently waiting, and as soon as they smelt blood in the water, pressed the C button. I was able to take that to tie it up on one and Defiant, willing to just stick with the Kuan, does not want to switch to Carmine just yet. I don't I don't hate the choice. It's not going poorly. I mean, they've got one on the board each, but Big Black is such an expert at this. Oh, did use that DC style flash kick like I pointed out earlier from Defiant, but just like how that gets punished as bursts and guilty gear, it's punished here. Yeah, it wasn't punished fully. Like Big Black had to go for the reset to find all this damage right here. Oh, and messed up the web Oki right there, but still was able to do something to you know, keep themselves safe away from the 3C attempts that uh, they, uh, that Defiant had been going for. Okay, I really like that. So Defiant had put out the ring to try and create space and work that out. And then Big Black was like, oh, that's fine. I have long range moves too, but your long range moves have massive startup. And Defiant was able to punish that full screen. Really great showcase of how those sets of tools work it against each other. Mm -hmm. So to see into the 2-2, two -two, just trying to stay safe right now. It, I really like this from Big Black, just being able to play super patient and right as they say that they yeah, the, counter hit with the overhead. Yeah, that J, that J, what is it, J6C is so yeah. vicious. Yeah, the, the J6C from, from Kuan is it's something that you don't see come out a lot. You know, it's one of those tools that you want to bring out very, very cautiously, because if you're too predictable with it, you can just get blown up for uh, for blocking it on the ground. Mm -hmm. All right, there we have the EX ring once again, and then 2B, my beloved, what a fabulous tool, using the 6C afterwards too. You see, this is why I love watching people play the character that I play, because I want to do that too. That was really sick combo. It was super sick, and it was almost a way for them to take the round right there, but this ah! flash kick at the very end will be... Yeah, it was a jump scare for Big Black as well, but it was like they were expecting it either. Oh, they were right at the end of that EX ring and just got hit by it. Yeah, they were. I think they thought they were spaced out to be able to start their offense, but it was just slightly, uh, you know, more forward than they expected. But the 6-6-C will connect with them this time, finding a counter hit as well. And I, I love that choice to use that as spacing to counter the 2-3-6 series that I had normally been going for. <sighs> Defiance willingness to down back and do absolutely nothing, including flinch, is 
one of the most heart palpitating thing as a commentator for me because I'm like, what are you doing? And they they know what they're doing. They are here. They're doing a fantastic job. As you mentioned in the very beginning, Tabby, Defiant has won tournament after tournament after tournament for good reason. And the way that they can get into somebody's head with these characters is impressive. Well, they both got her hit each other. Fantastic. All right, nice micro charge right there. Trying to steal the cycle, but even Big Black recognized it. Immediately just pressured them. Not wanting anything crazy to happen. Only 30 seconds left on the clock, so you actually have to be pretty careful here. You do. I mean, Defiant is the one that does need to make something happen. Big Black sitting at a pretty decent life advantage right now, and Defiant knows that. Defiant is waiting for Big Black to do something kind of like that, just walking forward where you can 3C and slide in, get your entire combo started. Not going to build up enough EXS to end this with a, an EX wheel, which you would usually be able to get the hard knockdown after. I'm expecting a grab, but we're not getting it. No, we backdash 3C. Then we use the wheel to keep it safe that time, and Big Black calmly just throws Defiant into the corner. Yeah, and chooses to try to go for a, a, a small pressure sequence right there and uses the 236C at the very end, knowing that Defiant has to go for a Hailmaker right at the very end to try to steal that round. And instead, Big Black guarantees it. You know, yeah. I think it's something that you um, you can see happen from time to time where the players will be like, oh, five seconds, okay, I'm just gonna go for a long block string. But Big Black knew that that wasn't gonna be able to close it out as Defiant was just ready to press as soon as that came up. And here we are, Defiant Wagner. Defying oh expectations here. Um, this is, I remember this, this character, this character existing, not Wagner, Defiant Wagner, uh, in the beginning of Uni 2. It's something that I think a lot of people in the beginning was like, this character's pretty strong. Uh, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if they're still comfortable with it and still ready to bring it out. But right now, Big Black is taking full advantage of the situation, already popping them into the corner. Yeah, but they weren't able to get their web set up like they wanted to. Ooh, that 3C was almost completely punished by Defiant. But Defiant hasn't gotten a chance to charge the blades or the shield at all. Uh, Big Black, I really like Big Black challenging the space with that 6 6 c You have to be careful, though, because there is sort of a dead zone in the middle, and if you miss space that, you are in deep trouble. Yeah, especially versus a character like Wagner who can punish you a lot. Okay, just trying to find a little bit of space, trying to find that one hit to open up a combo. I had mentioned earlier, both players are so willing to combo off of any stray hit, and they do it very, very well. And you're seeing that here. Big Black was able to get a hit from a pretty decent space. One, two, and three. Yep, there we go. But just casual backdash from Big Black to get out of the corner. I like how, yes. though, Big, or I'm sorry, from Defiant to get out of the corner, but Big Black stayed inside those webs to be like, you come to me, you have to. Yeah, it, it's, you know, one of those things that's very, um, like, just showing how comfortable you are with the character. To be like, hey, I'm not going to have to worry about anything that you're doing as long as I'm in my little, my my, my spider's den. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there oh, was great. a bit of a grab there from Big Black. Okay, Defiant does get an opening, finally. Ah! I'm sorry, Biakia's stand-up animation was really well done, but it is very creepy. Yeah, it, it is It is very creepy. It, this, is, this is something that you only see at this level of Undernight. Both players accepted about 10 seconds ago. Oh, the, the game's over. Oh, yeah. But we have to play it out. We have to let it finish. And you saw Defiant still try to do things to, to make it happen. Uh, an important thing that you would, like can worry about though is potentially gaining some more meter at the end of those rounds and i think that is one important thing that defiant did you know go into this round already sitting at 140 just 10 seconds in that's incredible doing a really great job here i feel like this is the total opposite of the previous round yeah it's it, it's very similar to what we've been seeing at the beginning of these rounds but as soon as big black is able to land a couple of hits can fully turn into their favor and now with Celestial, Big Black can make something happen right here, but Defiant is just staying oh so cautious with their presses. They are, but they're doing a really good job being the oppressor right now. Dive Kick comes out as well. I'm gonna get another one, and oh my goodness, you're 100% dead. You are cooked. You are barbecued. <laughs> you are roasted. The, 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 the exterminator was called for this little spider, but Big Black not going down just yet. The raid can't stop them here. Nope, not today. Sorry. 
Nice! Confirm off there, right at the tip of that uh, 5B. Able to find uh, find the routing to get a full side swap as well. Set up here. Yep. One, two, three. And oh, that time, I believe Defiant was trying to use the creeping edge to get out of there, but was caught by that third spider web. It was a good thing it was there because it looks like Big Black just with one more little set. No, they're going to be able to close it out here. I was like, they need one more setup. Nope, they're going to be able to close it out. 36, 36 damage. Very nicely done. Congratulations to Big Black, who's going to be moving on to the winner's side of Grand Finals. Good night, community, here as we get into our last two out of three match of the night. Revert versus Mario. Right now, aggression going towards uh, Mario's favor, just finding a lot of opportunities to keep the pressure going. Yes, the hamster is back. <laughs> we love it. I love it very much. And then Revert winning that uh, grid cycle to get the uh, excuse me to get the advantage. And now, woo, standing up just in time was Mario getting the counter hit to now start damage on to Revert. Yep. Going for the side swap routing as well, choosing to not reset into mid screen because you want to be able to gain uh, like corner control as it is very, very scary to allow Lene uh, any kind of screen space. Charge force function is going to connect right here and allow them to take this first round in their favor. Really nicely done there. Woo. Man, Revert is so fast in this character. It was something that I mentioned the last time that he was on stream because it was a Linne versus Linne matchup in that one. And then the throw, the scariest throw in the entire game. Do it again. I dare you do it a third time. Do it. Oh, you oh. did, but that time you were too far away because of that shield that Mario had used to push Linne back. Oh, unfortunate. Yeah, and just Mario even quickly cashing out for just a sword buff from the side swap, which can be very beneficial, and they'll find a great counter hit right here, keeping them into the corner. If you see, gonna connect right there. So the next hit will apply burn, and actually they should be able to just close out the round right here. No, that cycle still take too long. Oop, okay, now coming in is Mario pressuring. I mean, Oh, gets hit by the overhead. I was going to say that Revert has to be the one to make a choice. Unfortunately, their choice was still down back, didn't react to the overhead. That took the round. Yeah, I really liked it from Revert, though. They were You saw them shielding to just try to pressure out Mario at the uh, the very end right there. But Mario was already uh, ready for the, the green shield to come out to just push them back and immediately go into the 6C to just reset them and get them even closer. Uh, and you know, unfortunately, Revert was was crouch shielding during that time, so Mario was able to get the full connection right there to close out the round. Counter hit really nice there to start the round for Mario. It's going to put Revert into the corner very, very early, which is such a great place for Mario to be. The DP, though, is going to get Revert out. We have one grab, and then the DP from Mario is going to be able to put it back. Another DP. That does a lot of damage just by itself. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very good anti air option if you can be in the right spacing. And Revert has always been wanting to float around right above that, that range of the opponent. And uh, it's exactly where Mario wants you to be. Right, okay. Low into chain shift, but that is going to let Revert take a little bit of this turn back. Mario's in a good position still, just has to block. Ooh, almost caught that dash back from Revert. Stands up yeah. at the right time. Oop, it gets caught by a low there. This is going to be so unfortunate if Revert is able to fully take it back as Mario just uh, missed the IW link right at the very end. And now Revert has brought the life holes back to even throw techs out. And the, nobody expects the second throw. The, the, this, the second throw is always the most dangerous one. Yep. Good early throw right there. And just like that, it was trying to go for the second throw and it would have worked but it was slightly too early, so Revert was still in throw protection right there now. Going to find a good strike, though, after it, because uh, throw with his plus. I love that you use throw and strike within five seconds of each other, because hearkening back to the beginning of this stream, you were talking about at the end of the day, this is a strike throw game, and I think that this round is beautifully emphasizing that point. Yeah, and these are two two of the characters that play strike throw, some of the, uh, uh, some of the strongest, and here we go, not missing the IW no. this time. No! But Mario, you know, ha having to, you know, uh, have that first round not go in their favor still needs another game right here to fully close it out. But Revert's also looking to keep that tournament dream alive. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, because unfortunately here, if you are out, that means you get relegated to the spectators bracket, which honestly, our spectators here tonight are pretty fantastic. Thank you everybody in chat for joining us as we are here in the last round of our loser semifinals or potential last round. Yeah, we'll have to see if Reaver can make a comeback because right now they're off to a good start getting that grid break throw. Oh, found the 6 succeed, but not able to get anything off it. So Mario able to take their turn back. Nice force function. Yeah, that was really, really good. I really like the chain shift too for um, Revert to be able to see that Mario was going in for that low and able to challenge it appropriately afterwards. Overhead, ooh, stands just in time for Mario. The grab comes in. That time DP backdash trying to stay out of the damage range, but there's only so much you can do against Linne. She's just so fast. Yeah, and Revert, Revert's using that speed to their favor to not give Mario any chance to breathe. Tying it up 1-1. One, one. I love that Revert's name is Eeping Veg. Yeah, it's so Eeping Veg. Well, it's, it's, it's the sequel to Under Sheets in Bed. Oh. <laughs> today I have learned. Yeah, today, today you have learned. Today everyone can learn a thing or two from these players going into our last rounds of this match. Good backdash out right there. Kuga going to connect off the whiff. Going to give Reaver a, uh, a great set of carry right here. Look at this. What a round start from Reaver. This is... If I'm Mario, I'm like, okay, I need to focus on the next round. I mean, yeah. I will say that in uni, you're not down until you are out. There's always an opportunity. Went in for a grab there, a little risky from Mario. And Revert on that backdash from Mario is most likely going to be able to close this out. Well, especially with the EX Kuga. Yeah, you got that. Yeah, Mario tried, I think, tried to dash block out right there, but the Mujin was already coming out of the follow-up, so able to punish him for it. Good assault right there. And a nice DP just trying to get damage wherever they can. Doesn't want to give Revert any hands and you saw with that assault right there trying to go for the same thing into the double buffs nicely done there gets throw tech on the throw afterwards oh that's the dp and you just have to you have to stand there and know that you've messed up until you landed and then you've just given you've handed the opponent their turn on a golden platter which mario is taking full advantage of getting that charge sword coming out and is going to be able to take the round because of that yeah, that was so smart, like from Mario right there, recognizing that's like, hey, so many people press up at this situation. I bet Revert's going to DP there and then just full committing to the block two times in a row to be able to close that round out. Because now, like we haven't, it is, this has been so quick. We're at match point. I'm shocked at how much this has gone back and forth. We have charge shield and charge sword for Wagner. Mario sitting on all of the resources here. Okay, we do get a veil off though. This could be a big change in momentum if Revert can find something here, but instead Mario is going to be able to close it out and move on. Yeah, Mario finding that exact spacing they wanted to be in, had that 6B on deck in, just in case you see a little rat rum, uh, rummaging around, because now we are back into Carmine versus Biakia, Defiant versus Mario, losers finals, and this is a three out of five. I'm excited for this one. Yeah. This is a, these last sets of matches are, these are players who have played each other so much in both casuals and in tournaments, but not with the characters that you are normally seeing on screen. So it'll be interesting to see how they fully adapt into this yeah. game. And just for uh, context for chat, Defiant put Mario into losers. Mm -hmm. So in this particular uh, character setup with, so Defiant was on Carmine the entire time. Uh, they, I'm sorry, Mario had started as Aurier, didn't really go great, changed to Biakia, went a lot better, but was still ultimately put into the losers bracket. And that was a great round from Defiant. Yeah, and gonna be, you know, trying to continue that round again and again and again uh, to lead into their favor. Mario looking very, um, like, I don't know, it looks very different. Like you compare the last set of games that just happened with the Wagner to now with the Biakia against Defiant, and Defiant is just running all over him. Mario is hesitant, whereas before there was confidence, there was assertive gameplay. Right now it's defensive, uh, defensive to the point of hesitation because you're seeing not just like, so for example, right there, what happened? It wasn't just down backing. There was a bit of a flinch because he's like, is this where I go? It's hesitancy to press a button. Finally, we get confidence in a commitment here and we actually get some a decent portion of damage onto the table, but you have yeah, to you start doing that. 
Yeah, and you can see once that comes out, Mario's like in a very good situation. He's gonna be able to put them into Spider Jail and force it. Nice blocks on Defiant, but you can't block forever. Mario uh, shouldn't be able to uh, add a whole grip to put it in, uh, the life lead slightly into their favor. Right, really nice setup there too. I love the way Carmine just slumped onto the ground. That was a lot better. I I really felt like right as I was talking about the hesitancy from Mario, and you had just talked about that as well, he finally turned it on and was able to get some aggression out there because that's what he needed. Defiant was single-handedly running the show, kind of like how he is this round. Ooh, Mario went in for a risky grab. Defiant did not capitalize, but it doesn't matter. Getting a lot of blood puddles coming out. That time was went in for the grab hit with the overhead. Yeah, and having the bomb as well to make it so that even if, no matter what you did, it was still safe, it was still your turn, is very, very beneficial for the Carmine player. However, that VO is not. Mario going to take advantage of this, set him all the way into the corner, keep the spider jail up, and this completely drains that veil off as oh! well, but did it? Did he forget? Did Defiant forget that that was there? He backdashed right into it. He was like, Spiderweb, my beloved, and then just fell straight into it. You know, I'm not entirely too sure. I'll have to look back at that one a little bit closer. But here we go. Nice backdash out of the stagger situation. Mm, I like the green shield on the end of that slide in from Mario. This is setting it up pretty nicely for Defiant. He may be able to close it out here with that V. Yeah, there you go. Iwex, see ya. Crunch. Carmine, Carmine Iwex is so cool. It's just, it's it's just so super good. Ah. <sighs> It's one of my favorite. I mean, my favorite, of course, is Eltnum's because she gets the Big Mac, and that's super <laughs> sick. But um, I, I do like Carmine's quite a lot. Yeah. All right, now we see Mario thinking, right? Like, I think if I was Mario, I would be looking, I would be thinking about exactly what had happened there because we'd been seeing mm. that, we'd been seeing the Biakia come out and not work as well as the Orie did, right? Like, when we saw the Orie, Mario felt a lot more confident in their in their game plan and how they were pressing. I think we saw shades of that towards the end of this last game, but there's potential. There's more potential, I think, with the Orie if you're not full committing back to the way. I oh my god, I love this game so much. Uh, anyway, um, I'm curious because before you know Mario started on the Orie and switched to the Biakia. So and then there was there were moments of greatness from this Mario Orie. But we're seeing the hesitancy coming out again, and and I don't like that. I really don't. You know, Carmine is a character that I think you do have to have a little bit of hesitancy for, right? Like, you can't just, you know, full send it and be like, I'm going to swing. Because if you do that, the Carmine player is going to, you know, ruin your afternoon. But Mario trying to not make that happen Ooh, as much. Good nice. use of Thanatos right there to be able to shut down the uh, Blood Rain attempt. Yeah, you have to be aware that Thanatos is on the screen because he is going to be able to do that. And I think that was a great turn of events for Mario. It could be the thing that changes the mentality for the rest of this round. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, but it, it's we'll have to see if it can affect into the next round because uh, Defiant was ready to immediately press and found that great conversion as well. Excellently done from Defiant. Now getting into this next round. Um, cool, counter hits from everybody's part. Everybody gets a counter hit. Chat, you get a counter hit. Congratulations. And I think that's one of those things that Mario wants in this is uh, a lot of the other characters that Mario has been playing do struggle with the uh, the projectile raid there, but being able to just divine thrust into it and at least get the counter hit trade can be pretty beneficial. 2-2-C did whiff though, so Defiant has to cash out that CS, but Mario not going to allow them to get too much reward off of it. Ooh, text in the air. Work. Yeah, that could have been really risky for Defiant. Mario just needs one more touch. <gasps> Ooh, they both went in the opposite directions with those DPs, and it did not work out for either of them. One was a DP, one was a jump. And now we are in EX Carmine. No need to worry about having uh, anything cost health, because you will be alive until the very end. Defiant yeah. now up 2-0. I smacked my forehead so hard when I saw that with DP from Mario. I was like, no, okay, that I wasn't just, I do, it. I do need to comment that uh, I didn't notice this until just now. Mario's player card for Aurier said 19 matches. And he's he's played three of those today in this tournament. Those are numbers that you just those read. Are, those are numbers. So that the Aurier is still very fresh, but not as fresh as this phone on pick from Mario. Yeah. Um... Don't hate it. I really don't. I like that, you know, Phonon has got 
range on range on range. I'm curious how well Mario knows the character. Um, I also really like, uh, I like Phonon's force function as well. I think that can cover a lot of jump ins from Carmine, but curious to see how it goes. Yeah, I think the thing that you have to worry about is that uh, what Phonon can do to stop a lot of it is slow, right? She doesn't have the fastest tools in the game. So if you need to like try to escape out of a situation, you have to go with these more committal options like that. And it, going for the, uh, those kinds of things hasn't been working out super well for Mario in these sets. That was... Okay, the way Defiant played that was so beautiful. There was one little moment where Mario tried to stand up and there was just a catch on a brief little, like, 5A, and it was beautifully done, and Defiant just continues to impress no matter what character he's playing. I was blown away by the way he played at Frosty, and I'm blown away by the way he's playing now. Yeah, their gameplay is, all, you know, it's like a hurricane. It's always blowing us away constantly. Nice use of the creeping edge right there. And Mario finds a great connect right there with the yeah. uh, full charge. Really, really like this. Also, whoever designed the whip sound for Phonon, my commendation, because that sounds fantastic. Defiant, now the one who really has to work here. Good catch from Confirm from Mario. Not able to finish it out all of the way, but a lot of pressure coming out here. Good blocking as well. Yeah, Defiant wasn't able to fully punish Geyser, though, so they'll need to find an opportunity now to get it. Bomb is set behind them, so you have to be careful. But Mario finally taking a round. Mm. I love you know, I was very hesitant at the beginning, very interested to see how it was go, but that round, really nicely done. However, it still means that Defiant is one round away from moving on back into Grand Finals. Yeah, and you saw them try to go in the air. They were looking to, you know, throw out a fireball, but Defiant was already ready to bring down the blood on top of them. He's now trying to keep it, but the Ooh! IW comes out! No way! I love it! Get the catches and they counter hit both on a low! Mario taking it back here and then taking advantage of the grid cycle as well, getting to win that. Ooh, creeping edge onto the other side! And finding a pickup off of this as well. Gonna get one more mix. No, just going for the stagger, trying to strike, <gasps> throw him. But Mario finds the press that they're looking for, and that's gonna be them putting a point on the board. Great stuff from Mario. I like that. I like this character pick. And I know I had mentioned it before we went into the loser semifinals. How many characters are we going to see? Well, so far we have seen six, three of them coming out of Mario. <laughs> and you know, I don't think this will be the last of a couple character swaps we'll be seeing through the rest of the event. Nope. But right now, Defiant is looking very, very confident on this Carmine. Right, nice cross up, but Mario just able to block it out, shielding out where they can to try to steal the cycle, but it still ends up in Defiance favor. You can't shield throws getting grid broken. No, definitely not. The overhead comes out here. Then a throw as well. You're just, you're caught in the puddles too. I mean, this is Defiance playground at this point. <laughs> Yeah, oh, great confidence to not accept the the, uh, the overhead right there and just get ready for the whiff low, but it's unfortunately not going to work out fully. As you had to pop that CS right there, but Defiant mm -hmm. did not give you a chance. No. Clean play from Defiant. Mario has got to find an opening if they want to stay in this, because once again, Defiant is one round away, and that's a pretty strong opening from Mario. Very confident. I think Defiant was expecting a 2-2-C uh, a two -two right there or like an up-back fireball and was just willing to roll through it and try to get a punish. But Mario just stayed very calm and allowed Defiant to uh, get punished for it. But now Defiant is going to be punishing Mario for trying to interact with the dive kick. He gets all that health back. Golly, look how much health he got back from that. That was a lot. It's like it almost erased part of Mario's work and Mario has seen that and now wants to get all of that back. And then some does spend 100 EXS right there, jumps the side switch, you know, which side are you on? I don't know all of the sides. Well, it does keep you out of the corner, so that's gonna work out. Goes for the low instead of the overhead, keeping things a little safe, but Defiance use of shield being really great here. Oh man, what an EX3 scatter. Yeah, 623C didn't connect right there. It was right at the tip of the range. So Mario almost was able to take a full round off of it, but Defiant able to escape by the skin of their teeth. Put them in Bloodhouse one more time. Only gets one bomb set, though. No, I, I don't mind the charge, though. I really, really don't, because then they were able to CS and guarantee that they had enough meter if they wanted to use it, and they did, and they win, and that was really excellently done from Defiant.
yeah, taking it 3-1. I did like that phone on pick. I think Mario was like... like sidekick style characters that have a single brain cell and he is definitely one of them well he's got, he's got more than just a brain cell but his, he does have one thing on his mind and that is to fight as the student council president he will do what he has to for school justice <laughs> but Carmine's not going to allow it he does not want to do his homework all he wants to do is mix 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 me too. I enjoy mixing, especially if it makes cake. Anyway, in any case, oh, what a nice challenge after that shield there from Defiant. Ooh. Yeah, Defiant really showing that you can't have your cake and eat it too on a lot of these pressure sequences and showing Big Black, like, hey, this is what, this is the power of playing your main character at this stage in the tournament. But Big Black says, nah, I'd win. And found a great 2A confirm right there to already uh, move Defiant back into the corner. Oh my god, that charged overhead is really scary and just smacks you into oblivion. Nice blocking out of Big Black. Ooh, but once again, the charge on the shield. I, I say shield, it is the physical shield that Big Black is holding, not the shield mechanic. I'm going to try and be more specific about that in the future. But overhead comes out. Oh, I thought that was really ambiguous and that Defiant was going for a grab, but he wasn't. Yeah, it was a full commit. Nice Abare right there and a good tech out of the gold throw. I think Big Black recognizing like, hey, I can't have what happened last time where I got to be a little bit more patient with this character. I got to keep the aggression up. But Defiant still taking the first round. Nice stuff here. Getting the overhead coming out to, golly, these Carmine combos are clean. And then Sarugi hits the ball. But now Big Black taking his turn. Yeah, and taking his turn well, I, like this is, a, I think, a very important part of this character. As you see, he covered three quarters of the screen off of a non-metered end. He's just able to get so much damage and so much carry at any single point. It's very, very scary for the opponent. And then as well as yes. playing a very cool throw game, mm -hmm. you're going to see a nice charge to maintain that cycle as well, not wanting to give Defiant any chance of taking it. No, I really like the way Big Black is switching up the different moves that he's deciding to use because it changes those animations so significantly. And the tempo is varied. It's like, okay, if you are a musician, this is syncopation which means that you are throw like you are throwing things off in a way that is not rhythmed, it is not metered, it just feels awkward. And the syncopation yeah. coming out of Big Black is spectacular. Yeah, it's very like I think that's very fundamental to how Big Black plays. You normally see that more on the like setup side of things, but showing it in just his general corner pressure with Surugi is, is fascinating. It really is. Okay, we have attack on the throw. Nicely done there from both parties. Good anticipation. Backdash not caught, and then a green shield. Yeah, good green shields coming out here. And some blue ones as well. Yeah, I think Defiant really just wants to try to push out, you know, the green shields that are coming from Sarugi mm -hmm. uh, with their own, but Big Black is not having it, and at any given opportunity, he's capitalizing on his damage where they can. Good blocks on the overhead and recognizing, hey, that's a little minus. You can't press whatever you want after that. It's my time to shine. Okay, we have the Blood Prison set up now, too. We got two of the bombs. Yeah, nice. The done backdash was again. Oh, backdash again. Defiant's backdash is very icky. Yeah, I, they are always, always terrifying, especially when there's double bomb set right there. Like, and you can never remember, okay, which bomb do they let go? Which button do they have access to? It's always terrifying. Just like Defiant is trying to be through this grand finals. Up 1-0 on the loser side. They do need to win six games while Big Black only has to win three. I love double elimination brackets. It makes things Great. so exciting. Always keeping it on the toes, especially in a matchup like this, where the the round, you know, the the, the winners finals could have gone either way. These players are going to go the distance, and they are not going for speed. I love that you just referenced that. Thank you so much. This is why I love working with you, Tabby. You make me so happy. All right, now. I don't know that Defiant is loving this start, but Big Black was trying to get out of the corner, and now Defiant is sending him right back. I think now they like where they're at, getting those two different blood puddles coming out afterwards, the overhead. Oh, grid break. This is really big for Defiant. Yeah, being able to force a grid break to be able to steal, guarantee the cycle here and then have a very strong conviction to control it once again in the next chance is what I would say if Big Black did not decide to challenge yep. with the 2A right there to get out of there. Blood Tornado going to fully connect. And so Big Black has to make a Hail Mary right here with that 2 3 but can't find the full combo. 
No, this this is anybody's game still, but Defiant does have the range advantage. Big Black does have to get pretty close to get anything started, except for like a couple of the moves, like one of their EX moves and the um the IW, but Defiant does manage to get in. Yeah, I, I think one like important thing that you saw from Defiant right there is their confidence to just go for the run-up throw, right? It's like, okay, they're far away, they can be doing anything, just like they can be going back and forth to the JCs. You know, what can they bring to the table? And Defiant is showing it's, hey, I'm, I'm going to use every part of the Buffalo right here. I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that your life total hits zero before mine. Ooh, big counter hit and reversal there. Okay, chain shift, but is punished. Defiant is losing a lot of health here. Big Black does have all yeah i was like they have so much grid now they have 200 exs the slide comes in what's the follow-up afterwards another charge using a hundred of that meter to try and get in oh but defiant what a mash yeah defiant has just been ready at any time that these pressure like any kind of pressure that's been coming from big black has just immediately been countered by defiant and you're gonna see the iwex right here at the very end to close out game number two defiant up 2-0 that was so okay. fast and I think Defiant heard how much that we both liked that Ryewex and was like, I'll do it again. I'll show it to you again. Um, I love, chat, that you are going off of that music analogy. I really appreciate that. Um, and, you know, glad that you're all here. Thank you to everybody who's joining us here tonight on this fabulous triple stacked TNS Saturday. Mm -hmm. We are closing it out after a great day of KOF and of Grand Blue Rising. So thank you for joining us. We're here in Grand Finals. Defiant up two could reset the bracket. Yeah. And now we're finally seeing force functions come out from Big Black in a lot of these neutral situations, which I think is one of those big things that can uh, really allow them to close gaps that we haven't been seeing too much through the rest of this bracket. Ah, they're staring at each other. It's my least favorite thing. But Big Black is going to get Celestial going into this very early on. Could be a big game changer if Defiant lets him play the video game that he paid for. Uh, Defiant did not pay sixty dollars to not to not attack, so I don't think you're going to see that happen too uh, much. But Big okay. Black also paid sixty dollars to fight back. Going to be able to actually uh, use the Celestial to maintain Vorpal advantage while having two hundred meter on back. <gasps> Oh, that creeping edge to get out of the sh the shield from Sarugi, that overhead hit. Mm, delightful use of new mechanics, and I love to see it. Oh, and this is where you have to be very careful. Like, oh, yeah, was able to use the uh, the blood skewer right there. Stop out this pressure sequence from Big Black, and now gonna find a pickup. Almost. Wait. Two, three, six, your plus. Oh my goodness, that side switch. I definitely didn't anticipate that. And this the throw afterwards to win it. Big black, well done. Round on the board. Yeah. And that's the scary part of the surgery pressure. If you if they're allowed to just go into the force function like restances and resets and you just allow them to pressure through it can be very, very scary. But it's also scary to press on it. It's a you're in for a world of hurt if you are wrong. You gotta be right when you're at one health, like defiant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I know a lot of people talk about that that one health is the scariest place for Carmine to be, but you you know you're a breeze away from dying. You have to play mm -hmm. immaculately, and Big Black going in for that throw at the end was great. Now during this particular particular round we've got a lot of meter built up on really both sides but defiant again is the one who's really doing a great job <gasps> i love the way that he went in the change just spent the 100 e <laughs> exs to get that overhead set up the puddle look at this it's beautiful yeah but defiant is uh, not letting that uh <laughs> that get to them at all able to close out the round only a couple combos away from resetting this bracket not they're off to a great start Blood Rain connects and then immediately using that to pick them up, pick up. Already put them in the corner. Nice hits there as well. These combos from Defiant. I he like we said earlier, he has already made a name for himself as one of the top players and just does it again and again. The backdash to catch to make sure that the creeping edge didn't go all the way through was so smart. Beautiful. Dash out this reset with the infinite worth right there defiant took that in a 
astonishingly clean 3-0. And I think this is why we saw Big Black switch to Biakia early on in their original matches. I do, mm -hmm. It does not look like he is as confident and as comfortable with the character like he is Biakia. And I think that's why you're going to be seeing a switch right now. Yep. Big Black not going out without a fight. I wouldn't. I I mean, you gotta, you got, you have to fight. You. This is now the first of three. This is, yep. this is it. Um, Defiant with that bracket reset in a very clean fashion. I, I think this is a good choice, but with that opener, I feel like Defiant is just on a roll. Yeah, you know, this, people think this is the battle for the tournament. It's actually the battle for who gets to wear this color of pant. And right now, Defiant is saying, no, nah, this is my color. I get to keep the I wear the pants! <laughs> EX grab. Ender, nice. Creeping Edge gets out of the blood pinwheel and a good challenge on the 2A out of that pressure sequence. Not going to allow Defiant to just continue to run over them like we've even seen so much more in this set. And now forcing them to shield pressuring themselves out. That is still a bomb set behind them, so if they are able to bring it back there, it can be very scary for Big Black. Mm -hmm. I understand the use of that EX from Defiant, you know, trying to catch Big Black doing something, anything. I, okay, does get hit, gets a spider web set up. Big Black was able to accomplish so much so quickly. Like, the realization that they got the hit, they're like, okay, I'm in, I'm going. You had to do that, and now they've evened up the life pretty well. And Defiant's only going to be looking at those life, uh, that life getting lower on their spot, while Big Black basically only has to be correct once more. Defiant looking about one... No, it's about one touch for each player at this point. With only 30 seconds left on the clock, though, Defiant needs to make something happen. Yeah, ooh, that up, down, up, down. There's a little bit of movement. Big Black going to be able to take this round. And I think this is something that you're going to see a lot from these games is they're them going down to the clock and Big Black having a life. Just with Defiant having to constantly hurt themselves to do Carmine stuff, right. it's going to make um, these normal life total situations, which normally end even, be slightly favored into their opponent. So it'll be interesting to see how they decide to challenge and change that as this, uh, this game goes on. Agreed. I'm really interested in Defiant's choice while that Blood Prison is up to charge to get all of that grid. I don't think it's a bad choice by any means, especially when you are at such a life advantage. But it's a really interesting thing that may catch on with other players as well, and I know that other people do do it, but the defiance of it all, if you will, is very bold. Yeah, uh, so the the main reason that you go for charge right there is because you can only get two real bomb sets and your damage gets scaled a bunch for doing any hits after it. So charge is like the most correct thing to do at that time with heavy quotations. Hey, it's been working for Defiant. Yeah. It's been working for Carmine players since 2012. But right now, Big Black is trying to bring it into their favor. Great backdash gets out of the 6-6-B right there. That it was is one really thing trying to go for the left right now. It's such an important thing for Defiant right there. Big Black did win the grid cycle. And, oh, they both counter hit. A Defiant, again, I like the backdash. She had a little tiny microcharge to try and get some more of the grid. Uh, shield and chain shift from Big Black, though. The double down C did not end up catching Defiant. Oh my gosh, the movement from Defiant. But just a regular old throw out a button at the very, very end when Big Black did end up teching out of the combo. Yeah, Big Black was was just about to win it, but Defiant was able to find that last little opportunity to close it out. I really like this. Sorry, Carmen's like, ah! it was surprising to me because it was just really quiet in that moment, and he was raging, as he is wont to do. Ooh, they both... That was the world's latest tech. I'm sorry to point that out, but there was a throw, and then it was like, huh, he threw. I should tech! Yeah, and then uh, getting the charge after the throw with as well, not funny. Yeah. Yeah, it is, uh, that's, a, that's an Undernight classic right there. I love it. Yeah, 2 3 6 going to vacuum them down and get out of the uh, the blood wheels, holding them in the corner so Big Black gets to reset out into the mid-screen. Nice tech out of the gold throw, no TRMs here. Yeah, these players are really just like on the same wavelength at they every really single are. point. I can't believe we're still in the first game of the reset, to be perfectly honest. They've been very tempered games, very well-paced. 
So now you're going to get the hit here. Oh, there we go. There's the VO and crunch. Defiant decided they were tired of being in the first game as well and closed it out into their favor. I didn't even realize that until you pointed it out. That's just showing how, like, deep these games are going down down yes. the layers between these players and how far it's getting is uh it's it's some classic undernight that i don't i don't think i've seen that much in this version a, a very an old uniism back in uniclair and unist was games going to time constantly yes and with the general aggression of this game and the higher damage it hasn't happened as much but these two players are showing that like hey once we start learning exactly the, how this game needs to be played and how our defense needs to change we can make it feel just like that i think that is <laughs> I think it's a really good thing to point out. There were a lot of, there were small changes to this in Uni 2 to just speed up the game a little bit. I think in particular, one that is really important is that the um, the Vorpal Cycle is now two seconds faster, like almost two and a half seconds faster, and that's really cool. Yeah, and just the Vorpal Cycle changing more quickly allows for uh, like more swings in these tempos, but these players have been very consistent about usually when one player gets it, they keep it for a while. And that can really like steamroll their uh, aggression a little bit further, but now you're seeing it kind of get swapped back and forth at every single opportunity. It's just going to make yes. these games go the distance. They really are. And and I don't hate that because I said I was here to watch Uni and I'm here to do it. Once again, <laughs> Defiance showing exactly why you charge during that particular setup. And again, I like that, you know, we get to talk about that. And then as, you know, as chat, as viewers, and which some people have mentioned being new, now you understand why that's happening. And just like Defiant understood that all they had to do was find one more hit right there. Currently, like, this this is not looking like the big black that we've been seeing before this tournament. Defiant has just been on a run since they hit that loser's bracket. They really have. Oh, wow, what an aggressive slide into the corner, but the setup afterwards was really great. Charge again, and then just throwing big black into the corner. The wheels continue to turn as the days of our lives, and big black is stuck in the prison again. This time you are going to get the two different bombs, and then a tiny little charge. I think it was really because Defiant just didn't have that much that he could gain that time yeah it wasn't like it was uh it was a tougher situation but that situation did not look tough at all as defiant found a quick 2a check right there is now up 2-0 okay big they black won. staying committed again i don't think that's a bad thing but defiant has been on a tear three what was it, it was They've three, won five games oh. in a row they've run they've they've won five games in a row and lost maybe two round out of all of those that is that really just speaks to defiant as a player defiant is yeah. a fantastic player we're seeing it again and again i will mention it because man oh manity defiant once again on a tear and especially at the start of this round yeah we'll have to see if they can make the the you know the full run the 303 or if big black can at least get one round on the table but right now the pressure is on it really is oh boy okay we have the entire the, the table is set for defiant now he just has to finish his food but if him. big black has anything to say about it he is also a spider who finishes his food once you get caught <gasps> that was really smart use of the ex from defiant to use those frames to get out of the situation but big black back at it yeah and big black showing it's like like you can do whatever you want on my pressure as long as I at least get one opportunity in neutral I can take this as far as I want and a great challenge right there with the little leg from Defiant gonna keep the pressure going and even up these life totals very quickly but a grid break throw closes it out Defiant looking at match point here that grid break throw is huge yeah tournament point for Defiant here like you just said Tabby and then that grid break I mean like mentally I broke during that. Oh, the veil off afterwards too, but Big Black seemed almost like they telepathically expected that answer and are now putting Defiant into the corner. Yeah, it, since they weren't all the way in the corner, the, the bomb sets aren't as strong, so they needed to go away and they were just like, oh, I'll gain the cycle off by going for VO here. But Big Black was already ready for it and they're ready for all of this offense that's been coming through Defiant so far. Dive kick not gonna be able to work out. 
Oh. Oh, caught by the wheel. But not able to finish their plate so no. far. It was a very awkward pickup. It was very awkward. Okay. Uh, that wasn't, though. Just very... Just very aggressive and confident from Big Black. The line between confidence and aggression is very, very thin. Oh, that time yeah. didn't get the VO. Yeah, what a set. You're, you're stuck. You have to eat this. Yeah, so they, they went for the VO so that they could CS afterwards and right. then keep the gain uh, like slightly more meter because they were going to have to spend 200 to just close it out right there. So excellent stuff from Big Black and an excellent use of that 6-6-B right at the round start. Because Defiant had just been walking back or like going for a, a late jump in these round starts so frequently, so using that to cover all those options and keep them going into your favor. Spider Jail set up. Oh my gosh, wow, really great stuff to thrust there. And then 2-2 two -two series not working out for Big Black there. Oh, blocks, oh, but... Block yeah, really good setup from Defiant. Defiant is just showcasing the way Carmine can be played. Chain shift, but the back dash prevents any incoming damage. We did get a tech on the throw from Defiant. We got a chain shift afterwards, just run up throw. I like run up throw. We like run up throw. And then you're just trying to block because there was a wheel in the back, which ended up hitting Big Black and then allowed Defiant to get a throw in too. Yeah, this is just a very, very scary situation. Good grid thrust out once again, spending that 100 meter wherever they can. And now Defiant is recognizing like, hey, I actually have the life lead here. Big Black is the one who has to come to me, but you do have to be scary of that chip because it can't yes. be a lot. Ooh, I don't really know what that wiggle was from Big Black, but that could have been really detrimental to their entire game plan. We get a chain shift coming out from Defiant. Just wanted to slow down, see what was going on. Wheel comes out. Uh, now there's two puddles. There's one really far away. It's a little bit closer now. <gasps> this is huge. This is huge. That big whiff. You have to stand here and eat all of this damage. And Defiant is going to be your TNS Grand Champion in a fabulous Grand Finals reset 6-0. Oh, uh, like not a not a by by the end. It was